lights, baby. Flash your lights everywhere. Niggas was saying shit about me. They didn't even fucking know me. This is my school. This is what I was doing with what nobody looked. Y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> Last show of the week. We a little light today, but we all we got, we all we need. How y'all doing? Good, good. Chilling? Mm -hmm. You good? <laughs> you right? Good. Nigga, less is more. Nigga, it's plenty of us. <laughs> That's all we need. You heard what Hove said? <laughs> I was shaking out the shirt, okay? Okay, you know, Elgin, Will, Jerry West. Three black men. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is Gil's Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. As always, we got the legend Gilbert Arenas here with us. What it do? What's up, Gil? You chilling? You good? Yes, sir. All-star weekend. About to commence. Yeah. Bring back good memories for some. And we got Kenya <laughs> Martin back here with us. What's up, Kenya Martin? What's that? <laughs> so here's what's cracking in the arena today. Jason Tatum has become a superstar in the league and recently reflected on the sacrifices that were made to get there. Wimby has been phenomenal in his first year in the league, but what's the transition been like for the Spurs rookie this season? And NBA legend Marcus Johnson is pulling up to the arena to talk about the state of the Bucks in his All-Star Weekend memory. See, that's the good photo with the, the ashy ball, you know, the big <laughs> oh, the, the damn, ashy ball. Say, boy, yeah. You know, he gave me my gap tooth. He fixed his. Shout out to Veneer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This ain't Raymond. No. <laughs> But before we get into all that, as always, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you want to get down with Underdog, go ahead, download the app. Use promo code GILL. They will match your first deposit up to $100. Again, please help us help you keep this show going. Support Underdog Fantasy. Download the app. Use promo code GILL. Get that $100 first-time deposit match. And for those of you who already signed up for Underdog Fantasy, we have a special promo for you, courtesy of the legend Cheryl Swoops. Y'all... It's game day. Caitlin Clark is only eight points away from becoming the all-time NCAA scoring champ. And she plays tonight at home versus Michigan. What an incredible accomplishment. Are you going to be watching? Well, Underdog is offering her points projection at just seven and a half points. So if she sets the record tonight, that's a dub. And you know she's good for at least 20 plus. I say she gets it in the first quarter. So get your pickums in, use that special pick, and good luck. <laughs> Shout out Cheryl Swoops. Yeah. What a beautiful moment. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, be a Cheryl. Be a Cheryl. Be a Cheryl. If she was better than me, I'd have said that I might take the load. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be petty. Just, Just to, to, to keep, keep it going. Petty. I might take the low on the 7.5. So that Caitlin Clark <laughs> promo is available for the next about 85 minutes. You got to 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. So take advantage of that right now on the Underdog Fantasy app. Shout out to friend of the program, Cheryl Swoops. Shout out to Kaylin Clark about the break Kelsey Plum's record. A momentous occasion. Shout out to Iowa fans. We love y'all. Appreciate y'all watching the show, supporting hey, the Gills Arena movement. Well, I hate to say it. That shit gonna be over in four years. Mm -hmm. Cause that goddamn girl at Cause that goddamn girl at USC right yeah. now? Oh yeah, yeah. Listen, oh, bud. Oh yeah, cause she has to be four years, yeah. Listen, yeah. bud. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, listen. Hold on, while hold on can. while you can, cause this <laughs> enjoy this moment. Shout out Juju, Juju Watkins. She mm -hmm. putting that thing in the basket. Mm -hmm. I think she went having like 27, 28 points per game yeah. freshman season <laughs> at the fifty-one piece. <laughs> <laughs> but we support the grow the game. All right, mm -hmm. and we do mostly fans at the end of every show. If you drop a good question in the chat with your underdog fantasy username, we use it on the show. We'll give you a fifty-dollar bonus if you send us a video at mostlyfansgill at gmail.com. And keep it under 30 seconds, and we use that video on the show, and you include your underdog fantasy username, we will give you a $100 bonus. Keep it classy. You don't have to ask us just basketball questions. We talk about so much more on Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. I, hey, I just thought about it. They're going to 
they're gonna change the rules. <laughs> so she can leave early. So she can leave early. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna change the rules so she can leave early. <laughs> They're gonna change the rule because they need that good juju with the WBA. They're gonna change that rule. Watch. Yeah. If you can't watch the show <laughs> live with us on YouTube, we got audio versions available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from. So I'm start the show a little bit differently today. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Rick Ross's plans of enjoying a delicious home cooked meal were sadly ruined. Okay. Just the third fumble loss this year by McCaffrey, and nearly four touches. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now she the first person in the history to have a fuck up hamburger help. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> we couldn't even get that away. <laughs> it's hard to mess up hamburger helper. Delicious meal enjoyed by all. Uh, what's the worst meal a significant other cook for you? Hey, um... It was broccoli, hot dogs, noodles, and I think the kids called it a Tuesday. <laughs> it was the Tuesday meal, right? <laughs> Every Tuesday, it was like, like sausages, broccoli with fettuccine sauce. It's online. If you, you can look, you can you can Google it. Trust me, you can Google this meal. <laughs> No, 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 no. You can Google this meal. Just Google. Just Google. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll Google it for you. <laughs> Go kick it so I can, I can, we can Google this one. Go. It, that's, that's not a terrible combo. Uh, shit. shit. When you see Me. it. <laughs> that's fucking awful. It doesn't sound good at all. Kenya, what's, what's the worst meal significant other cook for you? I don't have one to be That's honest. That's what with I you, mean. I, I, I have tasted your wife's cooking. Yeah, I will yeah, tell you yeah. firsthand. Gave me the itis instantly. Yeah, no, I've, I, no, I've, I've never experienced it. Like it might have been like she might have like put too much salt in it one time. I said to teach Steve, you can go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead and show them while we get that ready. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, your wife has catered a few uh, Gil's Arena meals. Oh. Yeah, what I mean? No, no, no. That is shit. That, stop that. That, that ain't it. That ain't it. Oh, that look better. That Y'all yeah, made that shit up. That looks scrumptious. No. I just put it on a group chat. <laughs> that no, meal, I just put it on. Nah, don't do that. Meal looks don't do that. Y'all got to see the real one. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and load that up, goddammit. <laughs> shit. Yo. While, while we do that, next question for y'all. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, we're yeah. not going to move on from this shit. Fuck I'm this. trying to tell you. No. We are loading this. We are, we are getting this. Hold on. It's in the group Roast chat. Roast it over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Load not. that load that shit up there. Yeah. This is every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have looked at that shit. But, so while we're loading it up, with so many food <laughs> delivery options available, how important is it for your boo to be able to make a good home cooked meal in this day and age? Yeah? Just I mean, just as a or athlete or just period? Yeah, period, in general. I mean, shit, what, what else are you supposed to be doing? I mean, I mean, not to be, you know, sexist, but I mean. Yeah, no, we ain't saying you got to <laughs> I mean, no, you gotta be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen like this the old school shit. Man, ain't nobody women, saying though. that, but to what he's saying is, well, for me, for me it's, it's like, it's your attitude, mm -hmm. your looks, and your hygiene and all that, I, how we go down the list of important things of a woman, mm -hmm. for me, it's up there with that. Hygiene. Is, is it's up there with cooking. Yeah. Cooking is up there with your hygiene for me. Yeah, for sure. It's like, important. It's important. Because yeah, it's not feeling uh, good. There we go. Damn. Yeah. That's the, that was the Tuesday meal. Yeah. Girl, you, if you mix yeah. it all together, though. <laughs> yeah. Mix it all together, put some garlic salt on top. Bob? Yeah. That's a, that's a bad meal. <laughs> There's no effort in that. that. That don't say you love me. <laughs> like that meal don't say you care about me. <laughs> that's the Eckert sausage. Yeah. If it was, that's regular ass ranch. Oh, that was that's not. Even, oh, okay. Damn. Like, no, nah, I mean, don't look like Alfredo. Could. But. Hey, no. The funny, the funny part now. Listen, listen. Cause you know, I used to troll. I used to troll when we got in a fight. I used to troll with this, and I have a picture of my son, the youngest of Donnie, looking at it like. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I got a picture of him just looking all sad and shit. Oh, because kids going to let you know. Yeah. yeah but but uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, when, you, when you're just talking about, like, duties, 
duties, you know, as as uh, as a partner. I mean, if you're a woman and you can't cook, I mean, that's at the end of the day that that'll hurt you moving forward because yeah. if the person got to spend money all the time, I'm spending money for both of us, right? Both. Yeah. Now, if I remove you, it's just one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of it being twenty dollar meal, if I remove you, it's a ten dollar meal. So, you know what I mean? If I can remove you out of the equation and my finances drop drastically, yeah. then you are not very important in the man's life as you would think. Somebody in the chat said that's child abuse. That meal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, no. I mean, but, you motherfucker should have been tased for meals like yeah, that. Yeah, like it's it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so it's one thing, right? If you didn't have the upbringing to someone to teach you, but you get to the point of someone that doesn't. I, I just don't cook, and I ain't gonna cook. Like it's that, like, who, and you think somebody want to be with you? <laughs> like seriously, like, I ain't gonna do it. Like you can't. So it's one thing if you want to learn, mm -hmm. pick up a cookbook. I ask, can you read? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can fall in ingredients. <laughs> yeah. I right? ain't going to cook. Yeah, I ain't going to be faithful either. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. How about that? <laughs> oh, so, yeah, them pretty much go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go somewhere with somebody cooking. Yeah, like. I... <laughs> so, back to Rick Ross. Uh, I mean, it looked like he was enjoying that guy. Yeah, let's meal. get back to that meal. Now, he looked like he was enjoying it. At first. Y'all didn't see his face? I think, I, oh, you put the cheddar cheese on? <laughs> Yo. You put the cheddar cheese on? I think I hamburger help. Mm. It's okay, delicious meal, enjoy by all. I eat like ramen still. I eat certain things I did as a child. Okay. Still to this day. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Hamburger helper not on that list? That ain't on I've never list. ate that beef either. It's, it's not. You never had list. hamburger helper? I've had it as a child. I maybe. Maybe once as an adult on some on some high shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's, but that's the important combo. But it works well. It's a good. Does the meat but, come with? So this is he was watching nah, the game when meat this happened. Separate. So he so he was watching nah, the Super nah, Bowl. That, that was his, his Super Bowl meal. That was his Super Bowl meal. Oh no! No, no. I mean, no. Look, look. If you look at his face, I ain't gonna. He was happy he got that. So most likely he was just hungry, and whatever came his way, he was like, yeah. Like he started doing a little dance and everything. Go ahead and give me that. <laughs> bit, bit the fork and everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Y'all may not be rolling with it, but Hamburger Helper is universally embraced as one of the best struggle meals on the planet. No matter your budget, you can get it going. But what was your favorite struggle meal when you so, were broke? So it's just noodles then. So you buy the box, you, you make the it's hamburger, box. you pour the noodles in the sauce and all that. Yeah, you, it's, and then it's you get your hard, own meat. It's, it's kind of hard to yeah, mess it up. Meat. You get your own ground beef or ground turkey, whatever you prefer. Also, it's no different than like spaghetti or anything? Yes, oh, it's just like, noodles. but it's in a box. It comes oh, in the box. Oh, okay, it comes okay. in the box. It helps yeah. hamburgers. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. it comes in the box. I'm sure you probably seen the commercial before. They got the little white little hand. Yeah, the white hand. Yeah, but I thought yeah. the meat came with it. No. I was like, oh, no. no. You little meat, pre meat yeah. in the box. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If somebody else had cooking for him, I probably would have thought that shit too. But, okay. but yeah, you get your own whatever your preference is. The chat agrees hamburger helper is fire. Okay. No, no, no. I didn't say it was bad. But you could but you could take it to another level, ask, add your own bacon, and ask them. I get it. Ask some accessories. I don't want people to look. I ate bologna before. Yo, it just. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have my own block. Well. And my woman and I making me hamburger help. That's. Unless this, a, unless you requested it. Unless you requested, listen for the Super Bowl. You know what? I'll need some hamburger help. Like, I, I just look at it like as a as just if I'm on the other side as a female, right? He got his own plane, this and that. You should know that you're going to have to, like, to really keep and not be, keep him in the house. Yeah. And not, not his eyes get to wander and he want to be the big boss, right? Uh -huh. you, you, you better learn how to take some cooking classes when he in the studio. You need to, like, really do some other things to keep his attention span because just like the 30, 40 girls before you, they didn't have the same thing you don't have. Certain thing, you look good, you yeah. do this, you do that, smoke the blunt, whatever you want to do. Yeah. The 30 before you did the same thing, right? What are y'all doing is y'all accepting the free gifts and the bags and this, and you're not bringing nothing to the table but the same thing that all the other women are bringing. 29 others. I said it, I said it. 
Dude, now men bringing that same thing. <laughs> so, you, you better get in there, start to cook it in shit. What? Better, hey, that, that he want to give you that Birkin back? Oh, hold on, let me take the money, get the cooking. Let me, cooking. Let me go let me take the culinary class. Yeah, let me go. So when you when you got your boys over and everybody want to do the things, I can cook these meals. Now they look like, damn, your wife cooking this, boy. You got a good one. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, Gil, the chat, the chat is buzzing right now. Uh, they're saying that you grew up rich. Cause I didn't eat hamburger helping. What if I was too poor for that? No. <laughs> there you have it. Now there, you, see, let them know. Yeah. I mean, that was a good one. Yeah. See, y'all don't know nothing. I told you I ate yeah. bologna. Yeah. You said what? Right with the red thing. They had the little red thing meal. around it. Right. There. Yeah. I ate that. Yeah. My. I went to my. I had to spend a night at oh. my friend's house one time. Oh, stupid. <laughs> they had that shit. Can you fake so, struggle meal? Old school making cinnamon toast. Ah, uh, get the old GE oven. Hey, wait, wait. No, nigga, the old man, it's project shit, Gil. Like grew up in a project. Listen, hear what I come. Project kid, uh -huh. baby, him, uh -huh. right here. This guy right here, uh -huh. project baby. So what was the French toast? No, it was, no cinnamon toast. Cinnamon. You get whether you at the ends. So more, normally we use the ends of the bread for it because it was you got to use other pieces for sandwiches. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> right. In the bread, you might get a little butter, but you better not use too much of it. A little butter, cinnamon, and sugar, and put it up under the broiler on the old school GE oven. Yeah. A white joint. Yeah. So, you're in it, so you don't know nothing about that. Absolutely. You ain't had yeah. no oven. Project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ain't had no oven to cook no cinnamon. <laughs> brother, <laughs> brother starving. Yes, no, just, absolutely. <laughs> so you just said bread? Butter, cinnamon, and sugar. Bread, <laughs> butter, cinnamon, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yes. Hey, put it in the oven. That ain't no meal. That's, that's a good. struggle meal. What? Like a syrup sandwich? Like when people are like, you basically, eat syrup, syrup basically, and bread. Basically, <laughs> hey, and, and same, same concept. Damn. I, Bruh. Oh, I was like, I cracked the egg. Mom got paid every Throw the little bread in there, a little cinnamon on it, a little that's sugar. French toast. Oh, yeah. That's French toast. Oh, so y'all just had it without the egg? No, couldn't waste eggs. If, if there was eggs in the house to do, mom got paid every two weeks. Uh huh. Right? Got to pay rent, take care of two kids. Oh, you ain't had no white friends. Projects. You can walk out of the projects and across the street? This is not L.A., Gil. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, L.A. is the only place where motherfuckers grow up in the house and gangbangers, dog. <laughs> Game, it's game the game only place property. that people grow up with both parents in the household, both parents got good jobs, <laughs> and now you a fucking crip. Yeah, no, no, facts, facts, facts. That shit is wild to me. Like, I used to drive down these neighborhoods, and people were like, yo, this is such and such neighborhood. I'd be like, where? They got houses. These are... <laughs> blue, blue face Valencia. But I'm just like, yo, this shit is wild to me, right? <laughs> yo. <laughs> just so you know, blue face is for Valencia. So there you have it. <laughs> But where I'm from, no, I grew up in, like, if, you, if we ever go to Dallas, together, I would take you to where I grew up, mm. to my apartments where I grew up, and where I made it out of, <laughs> right? We got houses out. Struggle meals. Damn. <laughs> we just have houses. Dead, dead ass, bro. More species. All right, boy. Yeah. What was your struggle meal? Give, yeah, see? Ah. <laughs> Nessie Crunch Bars from Costco. <laughs> yeah, see, I right, listen, bro. So my mom cooked when she got home from work. We got to eat every two weeks. It was one of two things if it was fast food. It was either Long John Silver, Ooh. fish for Long yeah. John Silver, mm -hmm. or Chinese food. Like, we never, I never ate out. Like, and then when shit hit the fan, like, shit got real bad. Like, dude, I can, I can run this shit down to you, Gil, and you'll sit there with your mouth. Like, people don't understand what I went through as a kid, nigga, to be here today. Mm -hmm. It'll bring tears to your eyes, dog. Like dead ass. Man. So yeah, now when I say I, rough times, nigga. Like that's why, like the best day of my life. People ask me, like me being able to go to college, yeah, but mm -hmm. draft day. Cause everything changed mm -hmm. overnight. Right in that instant, like, it all changed. Right, but nah, man, eating shit that like really, like y'all eat that, like bro, for like. <laughs> It, it was hard out here back in Stop. the day. <laughs> Not for you, you gentlemen, I'm good. My dad played in the league, had a lot of kids though. Oh yeah, but yeah. See, didn't yeah. Trickle See, down. I, I, shh, boy. Didn't trickle down. Nigga, I didn't, 
Yeah. <laughs> let's, hey, let's move on. I just let's, grew up in sunshine. Yeah, I, and I, bliss. I, thought, I thought Sugar Mills when nigga be like, yeah, you can only get the cheeseburger. Like, damn, man, I wanted, shit, I wanted the Big Mac. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga, that, hey, do you, hey, listen, so real shit, so you remember the Eddie Murphy skit? That ain't no McDonald's hamburger. Yeah. <gasps> nigga, we wasn't getting no McDonald's. My mom was making burgers in the house. Oh, them big beef Pizzas joints. in the house, bro. We wasn't, no. The, the journals? Who? My mom was making, she was going to buy the French, the pizzas, the, the for French bread pizzas, buying the meat, cheese, and all that. We was making the bitches at the house, bro. Mm. We wasn't eating out. Wasn't nobody ordering no pizza to be yeah, delivered. Not burgers, none of that stuff, huh? Damn. Listen, bro. Yeah, I know you mean. Until I got to college. Until I got to college. My struggle meal was when I got to the NBA. Going, yeah, see? Yeah. I spent all my money. <laughs> I spent all my money. Shit, it was grits and fish the whole time. Yeah, see? Yeah. You, Eat bananas and shit on the plane. I was like, damn. <laughs> I need to go back to college. <laughs> hey, dog. <laughs> I spent all my money on the Escalade, bro. I had no more money. Shit. Yeah, oh, that buddy. was the poorest I ever felt. We got an audience question <laughs> on the topic. Mm -hmm. Gil, so when you spent all your money as a rookie, did you ever like take food home from the Warriors facility or anything like that? Oh no! Uh, <laughs> don't judge me, cause listen, this is, the first, <laughs> this is the first time that I really didn't have like, like, like I'm on my own. So um, back then we just had the bars and like the Gatorade. So I used to fill that up. Yep. That was like the meals at home, little Gatorade bars. So I couldn't wait to go on the road. So back then we didn't have like you know like food at the arena and shit like that. And if we did, it was the um, media. You go to the media lounge. I didn't know about that like the first that first half of the season. I didn't know about the media lounge. So what I used to do is on the plane, I'll fill my bag up from the plane food because I couldn't afford to order room service. And then yeah yeah. So what ended up happening is like, <laughs> don't judge me on this part. You know when motherfuckers roll they shit out, they food, the shit they ain't eat? Yeah, yeah. Let I me, mean, yeah, let me go ahead and put that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, half a burger, yeah. Cut the little slice off with their mouth on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't give a fuck what the. I was innocent. I ain't gonna lie. Some of them steaks, hey, some of them boys didn't even finish their meals like that. A little one bite of the steak. Like, oh, shit. I was waiting for them to roll that little plate out there, boy. I was in there digging. Yes, sir. And then I found out that, because it was Larry Hughes. Larry Hughes put me up on it, on accident. They came to gamble in my room. And when they came to gamble in the room, Larry Hughes ordered room service from the room and said, hey, this is uh, Larry Hughes. I'm in, right now I'm in room, you know, 205. So delivered to 205, but charged, boom, boom, boom. And then came in, boom, signed for it. <laughs> Think I started charging people shit to people. <laughs> that motherfucker left. Hey, yeah, this is Larry, Larry Hughes again. Uh, can, you, <laughs> can you get me uh, the same the same thing I had before, like a cheeseburger, uh, French fries, throwing a coke and three scoops of vanilla ice cream, please? Boop. And sure enough, they brung it. I signed for it. Boy, <laughs> I was running that bill up. <laughs> Gil always hustle smarter. Dog. Boy, so was, what was you? So you were getting per diem? I was, I lost that on the plane, bro. Oh my God. I shot a double up. <laughs> Yo, you had some horrible vets. I was trying to double You had some horrible yeah, vets. Little, Cause you back, back then, what it was like twenty something dollars back then. So you what, know. What the per diem? Back then. What was it? No. This is it. Like it was 20 something a meal. A meal. A meal? So, yeah, so it was like 80. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was dumpster diving like a mug. Yeah, I told that, you. That chat said, get you out here dumpster, dumpster diving. Dive. Respectful. <laughs> It, ain't diving. Diving. it was it was hallway diving. Hallway diving. <laughs> hallway diving. From a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had some horrible vests. Like look, look, breakfast got look, breakfast got like like they had like four pancakes, you still got one and a half. Yeah. Some little eggs and stuff. No, I was half looking, of orange juice boy. I was looking after dudes in my second year. So <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't let you do that, bro. See, but it, nobody See, if I was on your team, but still though, like I would I'm observing, bro. Like, I would have saw you putting shit in your bag and shit on the plane. <laughs> Somebody saw you doing that shit, dog. Them niggas knew. They just I, didn't fuck with you like that. Because the motherfuckers knew. Remember, I was an asshole, Yeah, too. you was fucking with people. I was fucking with people. So, yeah. let's say, I, like I did, I remember going to Toronto. I won 400. 
And I was like, oh, gee, we got some girls, we got some bad girls. Hey, go get the pizza, because I'm a rook. So they're like, go get the pizzas, and then we'll pay you back. Like, all right, how many pizzas you want? I like, like 20, 30 of them. I like, right, bad, 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 bad. Hell yeah, y'all gonna have one for me? Like, yeah, all right, man. Drop them pizzas off. Brother, there was no party. <laughs> there was no party, there was no nothing. I just spent all the money I won on pizza. <laughs> no reimbursement, no nothing. Just because I was bragging about all the money I, I won. That's why you get them back with the room service, Hustle <laughs> Gill. All right, but let's keep this thing moving. Talk a little basketball on this beautiful day, the this eve of All-Star Weekend. So Clippers pulled up to the, the Bay to play the Warriors without Kawhi Leonard, who's dealing with an adductor strain, not to be confused with conductor, as some of you on the internet seem to not be aware of. Uh, Clippers didn't have Kawhi. They also didn't have P.J. Tucker and Bones Highland, <laughs> who were sent home to reset their mindset, like we talked about yesterday. Uh, it was one of the more wilder games in recent memory, and it started in pregame when Steph did this. Just at 94 feet heave. I mean, come on, dog. Come on, Steph. That man is unreal. Bruh. <laughs> With the wave, hey, the Warriors, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so Steph dropped 41 in the game, but the Warriors tricked off their sixth game this season when having a 15-point lead, tied with the Spurs for most in the league. Uh, like I said, there were a bunch of wild moments in the game, uh, like this one involving Draymond and Zubak. So, third quarter, <laughs> Dray took an elbow to the grill. Man was laid out on the court. Nobody helping him. Play resumed, continued. That's a bad sign. Dre still, yeah. Five on four. Dre still laid out. <laughs> he still laid out. Coming back. He would be all right. Now they got to stop it, right? No. No? They can't stop. Still kept going. Still kept going. So you, can't, you can't stop it until, the, until it's a dead ball. Dre still laid out on the ground. Uh, Replay showed that Draymond actually jumped into to Zubac's elbow. Is that real, Kenny? That's, that's some action. Oh, no, there it is. You see it. You see it. You take it on. Dude, I don't give a fuck. Dude, that's no, no, fuck all that. Nope. Nope. Not from him. He definitely... It's possible. That's my guy. He's on a PR tour. That's my guy. Not from him. Nope. You can't be out here punching people, slapping people, choking people, <laughs> nigga, and you can't take that. So if a motherfucker punch you, it's over. <laughs> Somebody punch you, it's a wrap. That's what you telling me. <laughs> that no. Hell no. You don't think Hell you no. No, I'm saying you don't Fuck th no, Gilbert. No, I'm saying you don't think he was he trying didn't to get swing it. He, he was trying to sell the shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was trying to sell Yeah, but nah, that shit didn't hurt. <laughs> no, that's but at what point in selling You can't lay out that way and you are choking saying. motherfuckers. That's, like, at what point in, in selling that is it like, all right, well, damn. They, Dude, they did three trips and you still laid out. <laughs> he was trying to get the game They ain't stopped. called nothing. They ain't go, you ran into him. <laughs> Dude, it was inadvertent. Dude, you, you can't be out here doing, acting wild. Dude. <laughs> you just, so, let's, we got more things to discuss in this game. No, nah, uh, nah, dude, you can't be out here, uh-uh. <laughs> so no, if he would have swung the elbow at you and hit yeah, you, yeah. I would have went for a little more of it. Mm -hmm. But if I, if he swing the elbow at you and hit you, I don't expect Draymond Green to fall out. I expect you to retaliate. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you just went through. 16 games, right now. I don't give a fuck. He on parole. Mm -hmm. No, that don't matter. It's stand on principle, dog. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to be standing on, he's supposed to be the guy, right? Standing on principle, right? Yeah. All the shit I went through in the league, didn't know, I didn't give suspensions, all that. The next person would have got it. It don't, no. If you stand on something, you stand on it, That's right? Fine. If you ain't taking no bullshit at no point, you can't fall out. <laughs> when it did, when it wasn't that bad. You're trying to sell no, a car. You're trying to sell a car. But, but most of, the, when you think about most of his, most of those fouls he be doing, and some of those texts he be getting, he be trying to sell it. I'm with you. It just go against him. I'm with you. I get. I step on the chest. Ah. Yeah. He grab a foot. <laughs> he grab a foot. That's what I said. <laughs> most. <laughs> but when you, <laughs> that's what I said. Most of the things that happen. That's why I said yeah. it's like <laughs> nothing is ever warranted for him to be yeah. doing the things he's doing. It just be some touch touches in the back. Ah. Like it yeah. just be one of those. That's why. But. He didn't hit you that hard, Dre, man. I, I get it. You're trying to sell it. Up, I get it. You're trying to... But, dude, after you didn't hear the whistle <laughs> and you didn't hear people run by you three times, 
Uh, that's when you fall on the ground and come back. Yeah. You get the ball. <laughs> he was supposed to be up. Ah! When Steph looked at Steph got the ball, like, this motherfucker's still on the ground. <laughs> like, no. No, you can't. Uh, no, I'm not. No. No, uh, no you can't. No. Nope. So, <laughs> nah. Later in the game, fourth quarter, uh, Mason Plumley got a fragrant foul for going at Brandon Pajemski. Uh, I, I, I need your guys' this, this opinion on this. So, <laughs> first, he just tricked the layup. But then, it looked like Ooh, multiple swipes. Kaminga came to Pajemski's defense. Draymond got involved in this one. A lot of confusion going on on court. Draymond, <laughs> why did Draymond get into it? Out, got into it with PG Harden. Ty Lue was ejected. Ty Lue got ejected. What is everybody getting ejected for? Draymond did this, whatever this is. <laughs> oh, man. But just looking at that Plumney play, uh, given his history, does Plumney deserve to be suspended for that flagrant foul? I don't know. Muffin, we didn't get to see it. You see it. Like, <laughs> no, we need another angle. The other angle, like to see what that that. Because I didn't see the guy. Because we seen the there. swipe. Yeah. And we seen the hit, but what was that second hit? Was that like a real punch? What was it? Like that's. It was. We have it or no? If Draymond would have did it. Well, I was in the bed at eight o'clock, so I didn't see it. Okay. But if Draymond would have <laughs> did it, it feels like it would have been a different situation. Oh, what? Well, didn't he get kicked out? Just history, though. No, was it? Plumley got a flagrant. He okay, didn't yeah, get kicked yeah. out. Just history. It's history. Yeah, Plumley got a, a, a little bit of history. Not, not, question, not like Draymond. Not at Draymond's level. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. All right. Right. I mean, the frustration. There's, diff yeah. there's different rules for incarceration. It is. It is. I mean, there's different sentences for different things you do, right? That's, uh, so, just. All right, let's move on later in the game. In the final minute uh, with the Warriors trying to make a comeback, Clay helped the Clippers steal the win uh, with this questionable play. So, Pajemski hit the three to cut the lead to three. 39.6 seconds remaining. And for some unexplainable reason, Clay fouls Westbrook. Steve Kerr. Don't know how to react. Clay in his feelings a little bit. <laughs> Even the youngster. Clay tried to. Uh, Got left hanging like old man Tessie. Uh, how bad of a decision uh, was Clay's foul on Westbrook? I mean, obvious. Fucking obvious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a really bad decision. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it seemed like he was the only person that didn't know the time, right? So he probably thought that it was under the 35 seconds that he needed to foul, not realizing it was still above, I mean, 24, oh, my God, 24 seconds, right? Um, I'm thinking college. Right, 24 seconds, so. Shit. 39 on the clock. As I, said, I don't know what he, he had going on in his mind, you know, at that moment in time, not realizing that you still had another possession going on. Do you think uh, <clears throat> the recent report that the Warriors were trying to make a trade for LeBron maybe had anything to do with the situation no, just, going on? Just relapses, man. Okay. Like, you know, just like, relapses. You know, sometimes, and just be honest, sometimes when you're in the middle of the game, man, you you... Your mind be wandering sometimes. You be start thinking about other shit that ain't got shit to do with the game. <laughs> <laughs> now you ain't got shit to do with the game, and you know something happened in real time, and you just react. Oh, we hit a three, got a foul. Like even with um, J.R. Smith, right? I'm pretty sure all he thought was, I'm about to get this rebound. I'm about to get this rebound. Just get the rebound. Get the rebound. And he got that motherfucker. Like, oh shit, dribble out. The concept of calling time out and all didn't even. He was just so happy to get the rebound that he probably had memorized in his head that the rest of the basketball game just eluded him. It happens. For sure. And we have that, uh, the clip, another angle of the Plumlee uh, flagger for you gentlemen. Okay, let's see. see what's going on. We got to stop the white oh, on white violence. Right. Dude. <sighs> let's look at it again, please. Rewind it. It's, it's, one more time. Like, he ain't get hit in the face. Not at all. All that fucking falling out and shit. Boom. Uh -uh. Missed him. Hit him on his arm. Um, yeah. Dude. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Come on, man. Nothing. So now that we see it, right? They're making, they're making a lot out of nothing. Like, dude, he hit him. He missed him the first swipe. Mm -hmm. he didn't, didn't even touch him. Mm -hmm. The second one hit him on the shoulder. Then you fall out. Yeah. Like he hit you in your face. Not like, a flagrant for that one. Not at That's all. just regular. Yeah. Are we going to just gloss over that Draymond hit everybody with the four rings? 
<laughs> what else was he doing in the meanwhile? Well, what did he do to PG? It, it was well, when he was walking out. What did he do? He his belly or something? Maybe, of, maybe calling him mush. I don't know. Who knows, dog? There, yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what was going on there. <laughs> I don't know. But the four, like, the only thing I don't like about the four rings, it always comes from everybody but the superstar. Like, the one who, you know what I mean? The guy who really is responsible for rings just throughout history. They're never the ones that points to rings when they're having a discussion or having a, you know, because it's all about, you know, what we're doing in real time. What are we doing to get the next one? Yeah, like, I got I got 50 on you, right? You know, you're having a bad game. You know, I'm having a bad game, I'm having a bad game, but my my end result is not going to be the... That's what I said, I've never, I mean, me sitting there talking trash, I've never seen someone do this. <laughs> right, I've never, I've never, I've never. Right, it's, right, it always comes from someone who's, who, who got it, but it was, they wasn't the number one option getting it. And it's, just a weird, it's just a weird flex because it's not from the people who's. Feels like it comes a lot too when they're losing games. Yeah. And I, it was winning when he did it. But. There's no other, t- what other time would you want to throw it up? Yeah, that's fair. I'm just saying, if you're gonna do it, like you're gonna come out the yeah. game, nigga, I got four on the jump ball. Nigga, I got, I got four. Yeah. <laughs> Score my first lip. I got four. <laughs> hey, it's 30 seconds left in the game, bro. <laughs> you got two right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I got four rings. Like it's, it just, it just seems weird because it's always, it's, it's like it's always coming out against someone that's really busting your ass in real time, and the only thing you're standing on is the rings, because. And people point out Kobe did it, but he has five. So that's much when more When did important. he do it? I think he was on the bench. Yeah, somebody so, said yeah, something yeah. to him, and he... The Kings fans were talking shit. Oh, the, oh, the fans. You're the fan, yeah. yeah. Okay. Find it. Yeah. Was he playing? No. Nah, he, he in the suit. Oh, he was in the suit. Infamous me. Okay. But let's talk about Ty Lue. Ty Lue got ejected uh, following that Plumlee situation. That was his second tech. So after the game, uh, Ty Lue emerged from the locker room to congratulate his team and send a message to the refs. What Tyler said, where's James at? The referee, I want to kick him in the mouth. He didn't say kiss him in the mouth? I think he said kick him in the mouth. Kick. Or kiss. No, he didn't say kiss. You sure? We're pretty sure. No, or y'all just guessing, because it could be either one. So some because, people, it's, cause, it's cause blue kick dress, him in, white dress. So, because kick him in the mouth seems violent, and y'all looking for him to get suspended and fine. Yeah. Kiss him in the mouth seems a little different. I want to thank you. Yeah, I want to thank you for cheating, you bastard. So, yeah. Gil, to your point, shout out to Hoop Jab who captured the video. Some people are hearing kick and some people are hearing kiss. Can we play that one more time, please? Just to. It's, it's a blue dress. Where's James at? The referee, I want to kiss him in the mouth. Man, I want to. Ooh, yeah, ooh, either way. Ooh, could be kiss, could be kick. Either way, is, is kissing a ref in the mouth? For trying a, to cheat you? A findable you? offense. Because it depends on what you said. You know what I mean? He's my little cheating ass bastard. Like, you know what I mean? It's... <laughs> Have you ever wanted to kiss a rat in the mouth for cheating? Mm-hmm. No. Stop the cap. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't. Either way, uh, Adam said we were, we were breaking down that video. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if, it, if he's saying kick, like, I want to kick him in the mouth. Yeah, that's fair. They don't, yeah, that's just, they don't, yeah, sound. They don't sound, right? but I, wanna, I don't want to kiss him in the mouth, it doesn't sound particular. But still, you know he not mean it. Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not mean it. He's not going term. to go over like, <laughs> the 2024 term, he ain't meaning that. Okay. All right. All right. You gentlemen, you gentlemen are experts. We, yeah, we, and I know T. Lou. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are asking the chat. No the chat seems to overwhelmingly think uh, he said kiss him in the mouth. Let's see, so that, that stops him from getting suspended right there. <laughs> All right, no suspension. <laughs> you get it right. All right, well, let's talk about two players who don't want to kiss each other in the mouth. Uh, Isaiah Stewart may be spending some time on Chilligan's Island after reportedly punching Drew Eubanks before the Pistons Suns game Wednesday night. Uh, Shams detailed the situation. Did you just say reportedly? Oh, no, he fucking punched him. Nigga. Yeah, he, no, no, he, punched. he went to jail. <laughs> He punched. Got released, though. No, he got released. But you went. So, uh, he didn't go to jail, jail. Yes, he did. Nigga, he had to post bond. So, he was in the back room. No, nigga, they put that nigga in cuffs. So according to Shams, no. uh, Isaiah Stewart punched Ebanks in the back tunnels of the Suns Arena today. Unclear what sparked the altercation. Uh, the NBA expected to receive 
the video review. So both Stewart and Eubanks were going chest to chest before a swing to Eubanks' face connected on Wednesday. Both were separated and there is police presence involved with the situation. Then later it was reported that Stewart was arrested by Phoenix police for assaulting Eubanks, later released, uh, receiving a citation, but the investigation is ongoing. Um, gentlemen, good, you know, we've had some run-ins with Beef Stewart and our- Nah, we didn't have no run-ins, goddammit. I ran away. Yes. <laughs> My feet worked well. Uh-huh. I'm not Eubanks, baby. I know how to move backwards. See, that's what I've been, see, when I was running track, right, they teach us how to use our hamstrings to go back, right? <laughs> to work back, right? And I, I put mine to use. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. It's a big gentleman, <laughs> I'll be honest. I was in the vicinity guild. I was not going to help you, unfortunately. Yeah, hey, You've done a lot for me and my family, but I got to protect these looks. This What's still Vegas? left of them? What? This is in Vegas? Uh, Which one? Tacoma. We were Tacoma. at the Zeke Inn. Oh. Shout out Isaiah Thomas. Invited to the Zeke Inn. Oh. Gil was uh, talking to Brandon Roy. Rashad was in the vicinity as well. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Stewart. I think very similar, similar way, situation to what Sean described. Because he wrote a book. <laughs> Gil didn't really know what the fuck was going on at first. Like, yo, what's up? <laughs> no, it was not a what's up situation. <laughs> we had our underdog crew, but... Not very, you know, not gentlemen I would go to a fight with. No disrespect to the underdog fantasy crew. You know, we had, we had very some... Very fine people would not walk down a dark alley with your gentlemen. That's the difference between me. Like, so when people talk about Gil, you, your IQ ain't, you know, high. <laughs> Shit, you crazy as hell. Just let you know, huh? I dodged <laughs> a beat down. Because oh. I, I seen it coming. Ooh, shitty, moving a little fast, talking a little slow. <laughs> Tell that nigga in real time, nigga, you touch me, nigga, I'm suing the fuck out of you. <laughs> touch me and I'll sue. Hey, tell him that ring out. <laughs> touch me, nigga, I'm suing you. Like, Everybody you in the chat. And, you, the <laughs> no, but the people that settle and shit, uh -huh. they need it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, no, nigga, I'm going to drag you across <laughs> drag the cold, across bro. The <laughs> like, if I'm in that moment, if I was you in that moment, mm -hmm. I'm suing you, nigga. Yeah. For me, not, <laughs> you ain't getting out of this one for 150. <laughs> and for everybody in the chat who has an opinion, uh, I challenge you to go fight Beef Stew. Don't do it. Video. No. Don't do it, no, because he, he has a whole different energy built inside. Like, this is why I know that. It is Valentine's This is love day. <laughs> he pulled up with Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is love day. Like, we thinking about love. <laughs> Hearts and roses. He got off the bus <laughs> thinking ass <laughs> I'm going to spread the love, all right. What? He got off the bus looking for a motherfucker that said something to him probably last year or last game. Yeah. Very, very. The last time they played, probably last month. Look, look, got off the bus at shoot around. Oh, one. <laughs> Where he at? They been like, I know he better not be in this motherfucking gym when I yeah. get here. Beef still very, very good photographic memory. Remember things. <laughs> Because he, he came up with you, Gil. He was like, wait, I had to scroll back in your ID. Yeah, I know you had to fuck. scroll. I was like, like, wait I was like video? What the fuck like, are we talking about him? I'm like, Gil's arena. When? And it's like, nah, we talked about him on your IG. IG? Episode of a, another show that we did. Uh, this was after the altercation with LeBron when he tried to run through. Yeah. So yeah. what did you say to piss him off? This is what I said. I said, yo, we in the NBA. We don't fight. We got to pretend we want to fight for the fans, right? So wait till your teammates, wait till your teammates get around you and hold you back. Then you go tough. That's what you're supposed to do. Save you a lot of money that way. I, I, I think the, his, how he read it, because, you know, he probably went to public school. So how he read it, he read you waited till my, your teammates got around you before you acted tough. Yeah. So he was like, I ain't got my teammates around me now. So what's up? Mm. I don't as much as I wanted to say, I don't think you read that right, big fella. <laughs> I didn't want those problems. You can't tell a slow motherfucker they slow yeah. in real time. <laughs> uh, and, okay, proceeding. You can't, you can't do proceeding. That. Uh, we may or may not be at the Zeke end again this summer. We will have. <laughs> I'm going to wear bulletproof vests next time. Heavy, sec uh, heavy I don't security know how that's presence. Gonna help. Heavy security presence. Uh, we might need to bring Mike Tyson. <laughs> As our personal security. No, nah, but it, like on the real, uh, this is one of those situations like when, all right, just, just you know, assault in the NBA is any fight, right? So it, they treat it just like assault in, in the world. But ours is a little bit different because the other person has to press charges 
And when you get hit in the NBA, nobody's really pressing charges like that. Right. I would. Yeah. <laughs> so. No. What, what color is Eubank's skin? White. But see, this is what happened because I already, I already asked somebody. They said what they said what had happened. And so they, they, they told me this. They said he didn't go to jail, jail. Okay, like, so they he he didn't get handcuffed and go to the prison. Oh, they should. because you know, you know, now the team security got to follow him, make sure nothing happened to him, and do all that. So they just had his ass a little hole in the room. He's your black ass down. No lessons learned. Yeah, yeah. No, no, of course not. No but, lessons learned. But then what they said is like because it's Phoenix Suns, Phoenix Suns will have to press charges. The NBA will call and say, let it go, and then they're going to drop the charge and it. keep it moving. Because, you know, any fight when uh, when Kobe got two-pieced by what's the name, any fight in the NBA, First trial, yeah. yeah, that can be considered assault. You know, so. Like, I, when I heard, I was like, police got involved. Like, police? Like, outside police? Yeah. That's crazy. But, I, you know, oh, that's what I it's, usually, it's usually in-house. Yeah, they should have. Put his ass in cuffs and t drove his ass away. So put lessons, fear in him. Yeah, that's absolutely lessons right. learned. Took his ass, booked him. And, listen, hey, you gonna let, gotta let, learn something. Nigga. And I, and I think that's I think that's the the part that's with the NBA. We because we don't get penalized in real time for regular shit. Yeah, we don't stop the behavior. Not at all. Like, you know me, like, bringing a gun to the locker room, like, I didn't get arrested. There was no police involved. Yeah. Like, there was no police. As many times as I brung BB guns and paintballs and all, there was no, like, yeah. police. Y'all have no jurisdiction over here. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, who's telling on us? Like, you know what I mean? So I think sometimes we become, yeah. you know, uh, enemies of ourselves and we get over, you know. So a question for both of y'all. Tremendous amount of NBA experience. How much stuff goes down in the tunnel before and after games? I've never heard before. Like, the before has to be some shit brewing. Off the bus, just ready to... Like, that has to be some shit brewing, personal shit. Yeah, that was some overlapping shit. Yeah. You, you, ain't, you ain't coming to shoot around on one. Yeah. So that's, that's, the only time, that's the only time you're seeing each other on game days that shoot around. Shoot around? Before the game? Like, it's... You get there early, like, they, what he got there, what... They stopped that shit because of Oak. Yeah, like. <laughs> they stopped that because of Oak when you like, one team is working out and then the other team actually like Walks come in, in, mingle, they talk, and then they, yeah. and then when Oakley up, put somebody to sleep, they go ahead, hold on, y'all gonna have to wait a little bit. Yeah. But uh, like, I, I've never, I've never, just, just the Oakley and that one is probably the only ones I've heard of. The f George McLeod and Ron Mercer. Yeah, uh, so talk about <laughs> you know, the most infamous one, Kermit Washington and Rudy Tomjanovich. Oh, that was on the floor, though. Great, I'm, floor. I'm saying, but no, I think... Uh, <clears throat> like, but, like, that was my thing. Well, we, we on so... We used to be in Denver, you know, you, um, you know how the buses was in Denver. Mm -hmm. Like, I, after I couldn't do nothing to you in the game, uh -huh. after I was warned... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna tell you, listen, leave your basketball shoes on. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna see you by the bus. <laughs> You know, because we had to walk by the bus to go to our car. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just... So, we, we got a, a question from the audience. <laughs> Never did, but that was the threat. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was the threat. Oh, that was the Keep threat. Keep your basketball shoes Keep, on. Yeah, yeah, because you're going to need them. But no, I know you never got to that. They either, yeah, either had team security or the police walking them out. Mm -hmm. Audience audience question. Yeah, never got How to that. How many though. fights did you guys see that the media didn't find out about? How many fights did we see that the media didn't find out about? Shit. Well, we are the media now, so they about to find out. <laughs> nah, I mean, I've seen a few. I, shit. Um, mm -hmm. Denver, George McLeod, Danny Fortson. Right? So this what, mm. so they scuffling on the court, right? Just, to, you know, like two rhinos. Just, mm -hmm. ah, 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 right? And what ended up happening is McLeod got hit in the eye, right? So Danny somehow got him in the eye on the move, and they gave... They kicked, <laughs> they kicked McLeod out. They kicked him out, not Danny. And he went level 10, right? He went level 10. The game ended. So, like, Danny went in, and I'm coming last. I don't know where George came from. He missed Danny, and I was the next person he, he saw or something. And he left shoulder, big hand, boom. Like, oh, uh-huh. He <laughs> <It> wasn't <laughs> me. <laughs> like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> Broke me down. He was like, tell, tell Danny, bitch ass, I'm outside. 
uh, all right. <laughs> get, in there, go, right get in there and say, hey, uh, yo, dad, uh, uh, the McLeod dude, McLeod dude said he, he gonna be waiting out there. Then he did this dog. Then he said, oh, really? Oh, he said he out there. He pulls down his socks. Boop. Razor blade, razor blade. <laughs> what? <laughs> he had razor blade. Like, you know, like, like it didn't just, he didn't just put it in there. He had it in there because when he took it, it's white. Like, it's this ash. Like, it's, like it's been there the whole game. He said, yeah, I had, a, I had a problem with him for a long time. I'm about to go. Like, and I'm sitting here like, this is crazy. He had, he played the, the game with the razor blades in there. That's the wildest shit I ain't heard. <laughs> I was like, yo, something wrong with this. Something wrong, oh, something wrong with, with Danny. Something wrong with him. Oh, we know something wrong He was quiet him. as hell, but that was something wrong with him. Turn him on. Both you motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we have some Marcus Johnson theme sound bites coming. He'll be pulling up the show in hey. just a little bit. Turn him on. Yeah, be quiet. That was the craziest thing I seen. Like, oh, that's the craziest thing I didn't heard. <laughs> razor blades in the socks. Uh, Can we yeah, yeah, yeah. That man fights happen all the time in practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people not fighting for job, man. Fighting for minutes. You know, people don't know what guys are going through at home. Girl cheated on them, dog died, whatever. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I don't know where you get into practice and motherfucker busting your ass one day and you get to yapping and say the wrong thing. It, hey, tempers flare. It, it happens all the time, man. Or you, or you get to playing and somebody call you the wrong, yeah. <laughs> wrong word and it's on site. So, no, nah, it, it happens all the time, man. Um, Fucking Nene uh, wrapped his hands around Steve Blake's neck. Uh -huh. Steve Blake's daddy was in there watching practice. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo. Not in front of the man. So. Did, did the Steve Blake swing, though, at least? What? Four, five, six times. Yeah, yeah, dunga, yeah. Dunga, yeah. Dunga, 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 dunga. <laughs> Yo. Hell yeah, he gonna let me go. Uh -huh. Steve Blake's funny, though. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he ain't no ho. He ain't no <laughs> Steve Blake ain't no, listen, all right, yeah. You can search videos on YouTube that confirm uh, nah, what Steve Blake is crazy, man. Steve Blake with it. fight, you get into it. Steve Blake with it. Like, he, like, <laughs> like, bro, you can't, you ain't gonna beat nobody, but then he always gonna stand yeah. on his own. Oh, oh he's he standing on business. He's a man. I mean, JaVale, JaVale beat up Andre Blodge a couple times on a plane. <laughs> In flight? In, uh, they, they fought all the time. In flight, headlocks, headlock in the seats and shit. <laughs> Them dudes too big to be hey, The funny part is, they sat next to each other. Sitting there just arguing all the time. Yeah, I, see, yeah. Stand up then. Headlock. <laughs> sit back down, goddammit. Like, you should like, yo, what's wrong with y'all? Headlock, finish, break it up. They sit right back next to each other talking shit. And then Kendall Gill choked out Jim McIlvain my rookie year. Yeah, the legend Jim McIlvain. Hey. <laughs> Choked him the fuck out in practice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Got his big ass on the ground and choked him. I'll kill you in this bitch. I, I train to fight every day. I'll kill you in this motherfucker. I was like, oh, I'm a rookie. Right? You know, I'm, I ain't no hoe, but I'm like, damn. Like, had him big, had his big seven one ass on the ground, nigga, uh -huh. feet was. <laughs> <laughs> had to grab you. Had to, yo. <laughs> this is Wild Times here at Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, download that. Use promo code Gill. We'll match your first deposit up to $100. Go ahead, Gil. The last one I seen was, it was 2011, 12, or 12, 13. Well, I was trying out. It was uh, Lakers, you know, like Clippers usually open their gym for uh, um, summer. Summer, yeah. they're playing in there, and then they'll close it. And then two weeks later, the season start. That's when Lakers open it up. So Steve Blake <laughs> and Steve Nash, right? I'm busting both their ass. Like, oh yeah, getting them talking shit. <coughs> Steve Nash kept doing something Steve Blake didn't like. <laughs> he kept, I don't know, it was the pick and roll, kept doing a little elbow. Steve started warning him, like, yo, yo, yo. Next thing you know, we're talking about Steve Nash, back to back, MVP, dim. Yeah. <laughs> he said something, Steve Blake was just like, uh uh. <laughs> just fuck him. They sitting on the floor. <laughs> 
Hey, man, I don't know who going to win, but look, y'all got to guard me next. Yeah. <laughs> Save your energy. You don't need it, goddammit. <laughs> but that was the funniest thing. I said, no, you can't, you can't punch. <laughs> Yo. You can't just punch your people, man. You can't punch on the MVP like that. For college fights. Yeah. She was telling this story about Ruben Patterson. When he was here, about how strong it is. Man, listen, Jack. Open gym. Man, former players. You know, Hugs used to have the former players come back and practice against the dudes that live local. Mm -hmm. so they working out, they come back and practice. So during the summer, you know, husband let them get away with murder. Like, they ain't never calling fouls on dudes, like, none of that shit. So they fucking us up during practice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, during the summer, ain't no coaches in there. So it's yeah. fair game now. Yeah. Man, former player, he and that motherfucker, that thot, 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 bitch this. And mm -hmm. rude, man, don't call me another bitch, dog. Mm -hmm. The dun, 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 bitch. The, the, listen, I'm warning you, the last warning, man, hey, he didn't even get the word out good. <laughs> the next one. Oof. I know oh, that hurt. Man, he mm. hit him, dog, and it sounded like a gunshot in that bitch. Like, he hit him like this. Your hand was like, mm. bye, y'all. Mm. Come to find out he broke dude's jaw, right? Man, that nigga was fighting all that. He tried to grab Rube and ripped his shirt off his back. <laughs> no, he tried to grab him and Rube moved backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ripped the whole shirt off his back. I'm like, damn. Had that break, had them breakaway, had them breakaway jerseys at the time. <laughs> I was like, man, them niggas fought so hard for so long. Though. We would sit there and be like, man, somebody got to break it up. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, this is one of them fights where don't nobody want to get in the middle of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ever been in a fight? Yo, I feel like you were doing that to try to put me out. I've been in a few fights. Okay. okay. Thank you. I got the stars to prove it. Who got the word? Well, you know, some wins, some losses. Took a beer mug to the face one time in college. Damn. Damn. Fought some Arizona football players, Gil. They did not drop me. Three on one. Three on one, they didn't drop you? Yeah. Lyman. Well, I knew your team was trash. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, college fights is wild, yeah. bro. Straight bar fight. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, you want me? We can go for days. We have them. Funny shit, football player, to get into it. Bass, niggas live in the same dorm, send the same chicks, all them niggas get into it over a chick. One of my partners, nigga Aaron, punched dude on the football team and dropped him, right? He was, it was on a couple of them dudes, so they go get the other homeboys. We standing outside, and the dude that punched him was standing in behind one of my teammates. The nigga hit my teammate because he couldn't get to him. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> Yo! You took that for him. Mm -hmm. These niggas out here rumbling in the street. This is like my senior year. So, you know, I, 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 do that. I can't get, yeah. I damn sure can't get arrested. I ever you. Them niggas running around the street, falling and tripping, cars and shit going by the police. I hear the sirens. I'm like, oh, that's my cue. <laughs> Go back to the dorm. Y'all niggas live in the same dorm. <laughs> Like y'all don't yeah. not finna see each other every day. Like over a chick, y'all know what these chicks doing in college, man. Uh, uh. <laughs> wild times, wild times. Uh oh. We have the guest at the door. Okay. No, no, this ain't women. Uh, chat, chat talking about fighting over the work. That's all y'all do. That's, you are That's all y'all do is fighting over the work. So we got a special guest making his debut in the arena. Five time All Star, three time All NBA selection. Michael Jordan had his poster on the wall of his college dorm. Played the iconic role of Raymond in White Man Can't Jump. Yeah! Now an Emmy Award winning <laughs> analyst for the Bucks. Hey, 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 what's up, hey? What up, sir? Okay, Mark. Hello, son. <laughs> Hello, son. He's also the co-creator of your favorite host. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Marcus Johnson, welcome to Gill's <laughs> Arena. All right. We well, all want to slide over a little bit? Yeah, 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 slide. You can move the megaphone. Oh, okay. We just have that in case. Case, just you get out. Loud enough, yeah, it? yeah. Just in case you're sitting, get out of hand. We got. No, that's for the. Get up. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I'm saying that's Lexi's bullhorn. Like Lexi be trying to talk some days, and she can't get her point across. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't let her in. Nah, hey. no, no. He got heated here one day, and she had a whistle. <laughs> they gave her a whistle, and we, oh, we ignored oh, the whistle. Yeah, and, through the whistle. Yeah, yeah. through the whistle and all this. Yeah, 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 it got bad here. <laughs> but Dad, what's going on with you? How you doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. Um, you know, just a little bit of a break coming into the All-Star break. Uh, we got one more uh, game before the break and then, uh, you know, nice, nice few days off. And so 
a lot going on back in Milwaukee, as yeah. you know. Gil, Gil definitely has some opinions. We are here to protect your bag, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, I mean, you're on vacation, you're going with Doc? You know, because Doc said he was going to go on vacation, too. Yeah, well, Doc, Doc's, Doc's going to be coaching the All-Star mm. team. Best record in the, well, no, second best record, but because Boston did it last year, we get to do it this year. But he said he's going to get the money to, to, to Adrian Griffin. Is Adrian money, Griffin going to accept gear. that bread? Money, money, gear, the money, money, the gear. money, gear, maybe the gear. Uh, fuck, <laughs> fuck that! I want my job. At least job. the gear. Well, I you want, want my you job want to Give back. me something. Yeah. Give me my job, give back. Me job back. <laughs> yeah. Tell them people never mind. Uh. So, I mean, just looking at this Buck squad, obviously uh, Doc Rivers <laughs> taking over for Adrian Griffin. Yeah. Team has been struggling just a little bit in the Doc Rivers era. In your opinion, you get to see this team all the time. What's the Bucks' biggest issue right now? Oh man, just trying to find you know, who we are as a basketball team, just an, an identity. Um, and that was uh, even an issue when we were rolling and, and had a really good record under, under Adrian Griffin, who is an outstanding person, really good coach, I think in a different scenario where the expectations were not quite as high, you know, that he'd be the perfect man for a job like this. But this was a situation where it's championship or bust. And um, even that good record that we had, uh, was done with the softest schedule in the league the first half of the season. Our schedule, the second half, is the hardest schedule in the league. And so uh, Adrian came in and wanted to uh, reinvent some things that had been successful for the team under Mike Budenholzer. One of those was force more turnovers. Well, we were last in the league in turnovers, even though we had that great record. A lot of the stuff that he wanted to do, we last in the league in transition defense. It was just some, some, <laughs> some glaring effort, mm -hmm. effort stats that just uh, weren't coinciding with the team kind of coalescing and coming together like you would hope it would. And it just got to that point. And then, you know, um, you, 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 some of the things that had Bobby Portis's blow up uh, um, during the uh, in-season tournament, uh, Giannis came out and said that, it's funny, Giannis came out and said that we all gotta be better. The coaching staff must be better. Equipment manager. The equipment manager must be better. I must be better. That night we played against Utah, I'm like, I got on the air, I'm like, broadcasters, we got to be better. Everybody's got to be, we get ready to turn this stuff around. Everybody's got, we got down like 30 in the first half. Mm. And, and it, then that's when it was like, for me, a disconnect. Like, what's going on? I don't know what these guys, are. now next game, Boston, later that week, blew them out, played great. So I just think management felt it was time to, at this point in the season, just kind of bite the bullet, make the tough decision, and, uh, and bring in a guy that's, had 24 years of head coaching experience in the NBA. He's had some success as a, as a champion with the Celtics. And, you know, just, just knows the NBA kind of ropes and lingo and parlance. And so, you know, we'll see. how It's, it's been fascinating watching it kind of unfold. I don't know where it's going to lead, but it's been fascinating. <laughs> you know, you, you, you never know. You so never know, you, you know. <laughs> so do you think Adrian would have been better with a younger team? Oh, without question. If, if we were the Orlando Magic or, or one of these young up-and-coming teams, I still think he, he could coach in the NBA. He, you know, he's an outstanding coach, outstanding person, got his PhD in organizational leadership. But, you know, the, the, the first kind of sign was coming in and changing our defense and having Brook Lopez um, blitz on the perimeter at 7'1", 290 pounds with a 7'6 wingspan, second best shot blocker in the league last year, second for defensive player of the year. Got Brook out there trying it, you know, but, but with little success after about a about two or three weeks in, uh, I think it was Chris Middleton, Giannis, maybe even Brooke came to Adrian and said, look, you know, let's, let's get Brooke back into that drop defense that he was so successful doing last year. And so Adrian said, hey, I am no fool. I'm going to listen to this. Put him back and drop that, that next game against the Knicks. He had nine block shots. And so it was just little things like that, little adjustments like that, that, um, you know, he was trying to do something. You know, you come into a new situation, you want to put your own mark on it. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so I'm, I'm the new coach, so we're going to, you know, do things differently than the old regime. Well, the old regime, Budenholzer, our defense was like top five for the last four or five years. Offense was really solid. So my opinion is that you don't have to throw out everything. You know, you, you, you come in and tweak a couple of things here and there, try something different, put your own personality, your own style on it. But, um, you know, it didn't work. I think the guys, uh, if you were there, you know, you get that sense that something wasn't right, just in the huddles and, and, the, and, and everybody's doing their own thing and everybody's talking and, and nobody's, you know, it's, it was just a real um, non-productive vibe that you picked up on <clears throat> that um, I thought made the change um, necessary.
So I got another question. So even though there was 30 and 13 at the time, yeah. winning doesn't solve those things? Well, it's, it's you right? know, it, it's... If it, they was 13 and 30? No, without question, without question. But, but Everybody again, expect the change. But, but again, you just, you just schedule, you just schedule. Well, I understand, but, it's, but it's still the NBA, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's still the NBA, but it's the way that you're winning. We, you know, teams that we should be blowing out, it's a struggle. We've got to come back to beat, I forgot who it was, but one of these teams that was at the bottom of the league it had us down, you know, Detroit. We got to come back to beat the Pistons. We go to D D Detroit to play the Pistons back to back, and it's a struggle each game while they're losing, they're missed to losing 25, 26 mm -hmm. in a row. And, 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 and again, it's the NBA, and the talent is there on a given night for anybody to compete, but you could just get the sense that the team wasn't buying in, you know, in terms of what he was trying to do. I understand. You know. But isn't that, isn't that a... Isn't that a personal problem for each other, right? Because um, I remember when Eddie Jordan came <coughs> in and he, he, gave, he put the Princeton in, right? Yeah. Same offense that they had, right? And like, we didn't buy into it, right. right? Horrible, like, this is a horrible offense, coach. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is horrible. Like, this is not how I play basketball. This is, <laughs> we sitting here passing people, touching the ball that they shouldn't be touching the ball at the wrong times, right? And... Realizing he's not going nowhere, he just got the job, I'm new, so yeah. at the end of the day, it didn't work. All the new things that were trying to be put in, it didn't work. So he said, here's the playbook, learn it. And I said, well, can I change some shit in here that I see to fit us as a team? Like we have, you know, we don't have, you know, um, Chris Webber and them that making yeah. back pass. Yeah. That's not our team, so can I change it a little bit? And he said, do it. <laughs> so I took the playbook the whole time and then ended up changing it. And then the same team, the very next year, we added Antoine Jameson. That actually helped, yeah. right, relieve some of the, the backdoor problems that we were having. So as a team, if you failed last year and he's trying to implement something new. But we didn't fail last year. But in a sense, yeah, you didn't no, win last no, year. Well, we did, but, but Giannis got, Giannis missed yeah. two and a half games against Miami. But, that, but see, know. that's the problem. Yeah, if he wouldn't have got hurt in that series, I'm telling you, we beat Miami in the first round. Now, how much further we would have gone, you know, could we have beaten Boston to get to the finals? I don't know. But I but, really believe in my heart we could have beat Miami with Giannis being healthy. Okay, but see, that's the, that's the delusion that we have sometimes as just humans, right? We, we, we did lose. Right, without Giannis. Right, without Giannis. For two and a half games. Right, game so if you here. say, uh, <laughs> so let's bring back, let's, so let's bring back, let's bring back Giannis and say we would have went there. Then why fire the coach? So that means the coach didn't do nothing wrong either. No, so, no, no. So you fired a coach knowing that if y'all would have been healthy, y'all would have probably. Well, won. how long did Eddie Jordan last with you guys? Did he like have a lot of success? Once yeah, you know, we had we had what four, five, six, well, six Eddie, years. And Eddie, uh -huh. Eddie, Eddie's a good man. Eddie's yeah, good so man. so you fired a coach that lets right. you know that you need to change anyway. So right. the guy you bring in. If he sees that we could do this better, you have to give it some time. So sometimes we just go into situations that we don't like change. Right. Like if I like sitting back here, right, saving my energy, you come to me, right, now you want me to come blitz and hard show and do all this, and that's not what I want to do. Right. I'm going to I'm, I'm give it half, half. I'm going to give it half the shit anyway. See, oh, oh, oh coach, this shit don't work. Oh, he keeps going to Go give me the fake hustle. There you go. <laughs> but, but I was seeing a lot of that. It was a lot of that. It's a lot of it was a lot of, but even Budenholzer, now, the knock on Coach Budenholzer, I thought was excellent, but was that it, was, it was adjustments, you know, just kind of, he had this mindset, and I forget what he called it, but it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a corporate kind of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an approach where you don't change. You just stick to what you're doing, mm. come hell or high water, success or failure, you got to believe in it, you stick to it. And so that was something that, uh, not so much the players, maybe ownership. I know the, I know the fan base didn't like it. They, they, just, they wanted more change. They wanted him to play younger players and develop mm -hmm. younger players. Mm -hmm. And he was a, kind of a guy that I'm rolling with my older vets. And that's kind of how Doc has been so far. So, I mean, so, you know, it, he'd been there five years. And, you know, it's always something that, you know, when, when, you, when the players start tuning you out at a certain point, you know, ownership thinks that it's time to go in another direction. Yeah, go ahead. No, this is a young guy's league. Yeah, so, yeah, without question. You got to play young guys. Well, yeah, I, so. I'm, I, hold, I wholeheartedly <laughs> so concur. You got to play. And, and look, you, gotta, you, you can't roll with them maybe in the finals or no, the Eastern gotta. Conference, but 
You got it. January, February, March, yeah. when you want to give your old vet's legs a little chance to rest a little bit. I mean, these, and then you've got to start developing them, in my opinion, in out of training camp and play yeah. them, you know, in a little bit in December, January. So by the time uh, Andre Jackson Jr. or Marshawn Beauchamp or A.J. Green has been, if I need been really you. good. If, huh? I, need, if, if I, need I need you, you're ready. You're ready. You're ready. And uh, so, yeah, I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with that. Instead of coming into January and you got, I don't know, you coming into January and you got... 22 DMPs. Well, to, <laughs> like, but, but, ah. but, but, to your, but to your point, so the teams that that that, that killed us this year, phew, they yeah, was going up and down, and every time make a miss, they just pushing it up the floor. So we got our, you know, Chris Middleton and 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 and, and Brooke Lopez and, and Dame. I mean, some of our 30 plus year old guys, you know, they can't go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and Miami did that to us the other night. They came in. We just beaten Denver on Monday night. They came in Tuesday night, and man, they just transitioned us. I, they just played fast. Nikola Jovic looked like Nikola Jokic, you yeah. know, just lighting us up and in beating us down the floor, getting his spots. We close out. They beat us, kick, you know. And so, um, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's it, we're we are a work in progress. Progress, not perfection. So, what's the difference between, <clears throat> let's say, Doc and Adrian? So, like, even with Adrian, you, you know, you're trying to implement new stuff, yeah. and they're rejecting it. Now, the problem with the new coach is... It's old stuff. I need to implement my stuff, and if they right. don't like it, they're going to reject it. Now, Doc is on the time ticker, and this is why I first said he can't win here. The reason he can't win here is when he comes in, he's going to look at that roster, think about he's on the watch list. Right. So I'm not going to gamble as much as a coach. I'm going to play it. I'm going to try to cut my rotation down, and I'm going to play safe basketball. Safe basketball for that. You're not going to win, and that's the problem because you need to experiment to see who can do what. Now you're sitting here with a – there used to be a nine-man rotation. Right. Now that shit's a seven-man rotation because you want to try to collect these wins up yeah. to make yourself look good. But understand this about, about Doc and where he is in his career. I don't know what his contract is. Let's just say it's... 40 million? That's like three, years, three, three years, 40 million. Ten, ten, <laughs> we know. Ten, ten, 40 million for three, three years. We know it. Let's just say it's 40 million for three. So what, ten, over 13.3 a year. Okay. So, and if they fire me, what happened? I don't get that money? Yeah, you get it. Okay, so I'm guaranteed 40 million for three years. That's not going to put... Any, I mean, I, you know, and I've been around 24 years. Not mm -hmm. like I'm just some new coach got to prove. I won a championship. I've had some success. I've had some a lot, a lot of failures. Up three one, blah blah blah. But I don't think it's that same kind of. And that's the thing. When you're when you're a veteran coach like Doc, 62 years old, a Milwaukee guy, Marquette, you're coming in and um, hoping that that what you want to implement. Now he's got two great assistants, Dave Yeager. Uh, I, I loved him since he was uh, with Memphis, Sacramento. I thought he did a really good job. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, good, 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 good you can tell by the way his teams play. You know mm -hmm. that, that, that this guy can coach. Maybe wasn't ready to take him to the next level. Who knows? Um, uh, Rex Kalamian, Kalamian played uh, a coach with the Clippers with Doc. He's been around forever. So he's got a good good staff that he brought in with him. And so um, I just think with Doc, it's like, hey, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my best shot. And if these guys respond, and the guys know that. Like, they look like, look, y'all done got rid of one coach, two mm -hmm. coaches, actually, Boonholzer and Adrian Griffin after, after, after 43 games with a 30 and 13 record. Now, the onus is on you to embrace what this man has done. You know, you, we, we done got rid of two guys for you. Yeah. Now, here comes the third in with, with, a, with a nice resume, got all the background that we're looking for in terms of being a local guy and all the su success he had at Marquette. Now, the onus is, it puts the pressure on the players now. Now, what, what y'all gonna do? And so Doc's thing is he wants to simplify uh, what we're doing so that the players don't have to think as much. They can play with more fire. And you could see that that was an issue before. Uh, and then he wants to uh, stop talking about it and be about it. Stop all this, like, yeah, we want to be champions. We, we want to win. You know, forget about all that. Get out there and play like you want to be a championship team. So whether or not it's embraced by the players remains to be seen, but that's what makes it fascinating. So let's talk a little bit about Damian Lillard uh, still trying to find his rhythm with the team. Yeah. What do Dame and the Bucks need to do after the break to get him right? You said with the team or with the coach? You got to now. You know you got worded right, <laughs> worded right, with the new coach. Coaches, team. No, he was all. And now he starter all star with the way he was playing before Doc got there. <laughs> <laughs> if we revote right now, goddamn it. <laughs> well, I mean, Brunson, you the starter now, goddamn it. You the starter, well, Brunson. It's interesting. It's funny you mentioned Brunson because. With Dame, I mean, if and I was talking with him 
a few games ago, and, 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 and I was like, man, you know, if I had to grade you based on, you know, what I know you can do and what I've seen so far, I'd give you like a C, C+. Mm -hmm. plus. You know, uh, shooting percentage is way down, turnovers are up, um, usage rate is way down. His usage rate is like 30 or something percent, and that's like lowest it's been in about eight years. Mm -hmm. The thing that Doc wants to do is to not, you know, cut down Giannis's touches, but... <laughs> <laughs> this sounds great, but give the ball to Dame a little more. Let, let the point guard be your point guard. Mm -hmm. Giannis, you get out in transition, get out on the wing, you know, the, the backside cuts to the basket. You don't have to initiate every single action every single time. And Giannis' usage rate is about the lowest it's been in about four or five years. So it's not like he's been a ball hog. And, and what, another thing I told Dame is uh, when he talked to me about a month into it, he told me he was, you know, having some challenges, I'll put it that way, to figure out kind of how to play with Giannis. What's the best? I told him, man, this is around Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I said, Giannis can fix his own plate. You know, you, you worry about your plate. Don't worry about trying to fix his plate. He's going to get his. You know, Giannis is going to go, go to the hole, get in transition, get some offensive rebound, do this, do that, get some steals. He's going he gonna to get his. Don't, even, don't, don't concern yourself with him. And, and then, you know, as a point guard, you know, it's easier said than done because you want to placate the big man. You want to make sure he's fed, gets the ball where he needs to get it. But... But with Giannis, you don't have to worry so much about that. And I think Dame got, and he, and he told me recently that, you know, he sat out a game or two uh, with an ankle or something. But he said, I've started to really kind of see what this team needs me to do. And that, that's to be Dame. I mean, yeah. penetrate, kick, use your quickness, that you, that use that little extra gear you have when you can beat the guy off the dribble and separate. They, you collapse the defense, now look to, you know, kick at the shooter. So he's doing a better job of that. And you mentioned Brunton. I'm telling you, Dame's defense has been... Um, disparaged and talked about, but this dude plays better defense than he what people, yeah, huh? yeah, tough yeah. what people yeah. thought. Yeah, people yeah. Thought, he, he, shot, he locked Brunton last three or four minutes of this Nick game, I think it was in in-season in season tournament or whatever it was, but I mean, he got into Jalen Brunson and gave this effort that to me was like, okay, now, see, you didn't expose yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see <laughs> anything mm -hmm. less come, so, you know, crunch time. So what we used to do when, so you got, so when Chauncey came, right? Mm-hmm. Chance a great decision maker. Chance will get the ball where he need to get it to, but he can score where he need to. So we stopped throwing the ball to Melo in the backcourt. Mm. Like whoever <laughs> got the now whoever got the rebound now you make him get ahead of the ball. Yeah, yeah. Right. Make him go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now when other guys, so when Brooke getting the rebound or Chris, whoever them guys don't want to bring it up, they can't bring it up. They give it to Dame instead of Giannis is always being the one back there looking for the outlet. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you make him get ahead of the ball. Yeah. Now Dame got the ball, now he can be the decision maker. I think a couple, a few games, guys, right. Brooke or somebody threw it to Dame, he wouldn't hit, like, hit him in the back of the head because he's waiting for him to give it to Giannis. Yeah. He's so used to this is yeah, how exactly. we've been operating. So, this and, needs to be a conversation. Like, yeah. I ain't saying you got to be 100% of the time. Right. Right. But as a group, in order for us to play better and play different, right. get a different result. Play different. Play we different. Gotta, yeah. What we got, I'm not, but so it has to be a conversation within the locker room. Yeah. That, Giannis, we need you to get ahead of the ball more times right. bringing it up so you can go in the pick and roll with Dame. Now it's a better... But remember I, but, remember I, said, I, I said, I'm watching the game and I, I, I pointed something out. I said, Dame and Giannis do not know how to play together yeah. with each other because what ends up happening is when Dame does a pick and roll with Giannis, everyone knows Giannis can't shoot, so they're going to blitz Dame, right? So now when... He wants to set a pick and roll thinking this is about to be Amari and him. And they're like, nah, we're going to blitz you. Get it out of your now head. he's like, oh, shit, I got to give it to. And he's not really good at yeah. passing out of Dame. That's, yeah. you know, that's not a strength of his. Yeah. Bigs and teams are doing that. The real big, long length on him, uh, coming blitzing him. And he, he has some issues kind of finding the open guys because of his size yeah. and all that. So. so he'd rather stay with, uh, so now he'd rather just do the pick and roll with Lope. Brooke. 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 He loves Brooke. Because, yeah, so, he, so <laughs> now Giannis for Dame, when Dame want to get off and get his shit going, Giannis is not his number one option. He's like, I don't want to. You can do your own. Me, I'm gonna play with you guys. Him and yeah. Bobby and that's what it, and that's what ends up happening. So Dame is consciously going away from Giannis pick and roll and staying here. Yeah. Right. And then when Giannis wants to play, Giannis is playing one on one. So what ends up happening is, is it's going to be what is really the betterment of the team. Mm -hmm. And the problem that's going to be is this. Giannis, you're gonna have to play high uh, half court basketball, yeah. right? Because when we give it to Dame and Dame is bringing it up, your fast break is gonna be cut off. Now that's fifty thousand dollars that you you spent in the summer to try to prove a point. You gonna you gonna have to exercise that fifty thousand. Get your ass in that post, <laughs> and I, yeah. 
Now you gonna have me sitting here like, <laughs> right? And, and plus, he got you. <laughs> well, plus, he you know, got you, goddamn it. <laughs> and when Giannis goes one on one, it's like one on four. four it's yeah. walls. It's mm-hmm. walls. I mean, and, and, and the good Miami, Eric Spolstra. I mean, Giannis had uh, one free throw, I believe, for the game. He had uh, uh, 19 at halftime, 23 for the game, four in the second. I mean, they built a wall and did it effectively. You know, Bam Adebayo's got the strength, got the foot speed to kind of stay in front of him, not let him get to his spots. Then every time he spun, there was somebody coming at him. And, you know, and so it, it, it's, it's better for him almost in situations like that against good teams, which you'll see in the playoffs, is to rely on Dame to kind of initiate. And now you looked as that Cut. weak side cutter to find your spots in there after they blitz Dame or whatever they're going to do to try and slow him down, all that defensive attention he can command. Now you've got some stuff going on on that second side that you can exploit. And, and his jumper, he's knocking down his mid-range yeah. jumper a lot more consistently the last five or six games. It's, it's starting to come around. His post-up game is a lot, a lot better. He's got the you know, nice little jump hook middle. He's got this fade to the right shoulder on the baseline that he's knocking down. So it's just a question of, and this is where Doc and his staff, he got to earn that, <laughs> how much, 13.3? <laughs> he got to earn that money coming up, coming, you know, divide. And Doc, even, Doc has said that this team is not, it's a long ways from coming together. And it's mm-hmm. going to be after the all-star break before we kind of get, get our feet under, under us and, and go on a little bit of a roll. And so, so far he's been uh, prescient <laughs> with, with that. You better be careful where y'all, listen, that first round matchup. Yeah, can't let too many go, and you fuck around, slip, and you got the wrong matchup in the yeah. first round. Well, right now, I mean, there's a point where we were three, and Indiana was six, and I looked at that, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah, <laughs> we don't want that." Yeah, that's what's, what, right. no, what's, what was funny is it's 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 Giannis, right? Like after this season, he should look at how Miami plays him. Mm-hmm. How do they keep stopping me personally? Right, I'm having trouble with this team. What are they doing? So when he thinks about this is the best team defense that I face. Right. Let me watch it. Let me break down the film so I can work on my see game. Where this I, see where my adva- see yes. where I can gain an advantage against this, them. This is the person. This, this ain't a person. This is a team right. that has your number. That means you have the blueprint to how to get better. Right. Right. Once you defeat them, there's really nothing that can stop you. Right, so if you need to say, all right, I can post him up here, I can cut here, I can. Yeah. This is where I need to work on my mid range. You will start really understanding how to get better as a basketball player. Well, and that's the difference, you know, between KD and, and a guy like Giannis. And it's, it's, I'm, you know, overstating the obvious here, but you know, KD will pull that mid range jumper ten times a game. You give it to him. Mm-hmm. Giannis may shoot it three times, five, even if he's making a miss and. It's kind of a limit, mm-hmm. and that's that confidence mm-hmm. that, that you're lacking in terms of where you were as a mid-range shooter, where you're now, you're doing better, but you still don't have that inner confidence that, you know, that, 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 that makes you, like Chris Middleton, makes mm-hmm. you shoot it without even thinking. There's mm-hmm. still some, th- you can see him thinking out there and hesitating, and, thinking, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he'll pull it and it's short, you know. Yep. And I always say on the air, you, you, you got to let that thing go. If they give it to you, let it go, and live, the, live with the results, so. So you talked about uh, the Bucks being three, Pacers being six. Uh, if the playoffs started today, Bucks would be the third seed, Pacers would be the sixth seed. Neither here nor there, but just something to think about from, from that matchup <laughs> standpoint. But you get a, you know, in your role as an analyst with the Bucks, you get a front row seat to see some of the best young talent in the NBA. We talk about this a lot on the show, but in your opinion, who has all the ingredients to be the next face of the league? Oh man, that's a, that's a, give me some names. I don't know. That's a, that's a. I mean, t- we talk about Ja, Anthony Edwards. I mean, Thanasis. <laughs> Man, the, the Nassas did a uh, did a <laughs> sham guy. Yeah, we talked about did you it. You see the Nassas a sham guy the other day, man? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. The world saw it. The world is the world. He made sure we saw it. <laughs> Leave the Nassas alone, man. But just, who, <laughs> who, when you look at these young players around the league, who's Jason the most Tatum, impressive Tatum, Anthony team? Edwards. Yeah, I mean, I like Anthony Edwards. I mean, Anthony Edwards, he's interesting because um, he has really worked on his game to the point now where he's comfortable scoring pretty much anywhere on the floor. And he's always had the athleticism. It's funny, it's, it's ironic, I heard, you know, that old tape of Anthony Edwards in high school, you know, talking about Cam Reddish is the dude, everybody want to be like Cam. Just amazing how, you know, as time passes, how you pass dudes, mm-hmm. you know, you guys all experienced yep. that. You know, dudes that were up here that you just idolized, and all of a sudden it gets, it gets closer and closer, and then pretty soon you're looking down at them. But Anthony Edwards, it, it, and the way Minnesota's playing, uh, the way uh, their coach has them playing at both ends, top defense in the league. I love what they're doing offensively, Gobert and uh, and Cat seem to have uh, found out uh, how to play together. Um, yeah, you know they are a real solid team. You know it's it's hard to 
I mean, are we saying Jokic is not a face of the league right now or what? I don't think he, he want to be. be. Yeah. He doesn't want to be. Somebody yeah. has to embrace it. He don't got the face to be the face of the league. This is all of it. So what you saying? Personality and just all of it. Yeah. Kind of that personality superstar, game. megastar, shoes. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. kids, the, 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 the ones that the kids look like want to be like. Right, right. We said, you know, Ja had a good opportunity to do that. Obviously a little tough with the suspension and not right. missing the rest of the yeah, season. Yeah, injuries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tatum is, is, is you know, I can't, I can't fight Tatum. I love Tatum. I mean, Tatum, and people talk about, you know, his playoffs, I don't know. I mean, there's some criticism of him that, that uh, people I know kind of kind of throw out there that think Jalen Brown is better at this, that, and I think they're crazy. I think, I think Jason Tatum, <laughs> he's just, he's so good, you know, with, with his ability to, 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 to get to his spots and, 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 and the, the long-range shooting, and he's, he finishes inside, and I don't know. I mean, I, I like him as a, as a potential face of the league also. All right, well, let, let's keep this thing moving. It's the evil All-Star weekend. We have a combined nine All-Star appearances here on this couch. So there's so much that you Thanks guys... Thanks for including me. <laughs> hey, you, you're the one who came to the West Wait, Conference. You're the head. You got three, three, two? Okay. But one. came to the West. We'll talk about <laughs> That's it. That's your fault coming to the West. One. One. You, said, one. you, one. you one. should have took that slave deal. <laughs> <laughs> you got one. Duh. Okay. Duh. Okay. But you took way less. <laughs> in Kane's defense, I think the, Nigga, score, was... the most points on this couch in an All-Star game. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, you already know. I'm, I'm for sure... I'm not even close. We had 17? Yeah, 17 to 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 17 I never, to 7? I never had a good All-Star. Well, now, they were playing defense back in your, your days, right? That was well, it the... was 2004 All-Star. And okay, was... yeah. I was yeah, too yeah. excited. Yeah, I was cool. too. Yeah, no, I was way too... My excited leads to jumping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Throw it! So, we just want to take y'all back down memory lane. Uh, how'd you feel when you first found out that you made your first All-Star game? <clears throat> and what was it like walking in that locker room, seeing your All-Star jersey hanging up there amongst all the other great players in the league? Well, the first All-Star game, I mean, it was expected. Shit, I was, aver Damn. I was averaging 26 a game. I was, you know, third leading scorer in the league. You know, started off the season my second year with 30, uh, six or seven straight 30-point games. Yeah. That was the year I was first team All-Pro. So that was like... I, mean, I should have. I thought I should have made it the year before. As a rookie, I averaged like 20 and 10, basically 19.7 or something, and 10, re 10 plus rebounds. So I thought I had a le legitimate chance to make that. They took Brian Winters, my teammate, and he even told me like, "Yeah, you know, you'll, you'll make plenty more of these. They probably should have took you this year." And so that next year, you know, was was like expected. Now that first year, we played, we played in the uh, Detroit Silverdome, Pontiac Silverdome. All right, so that's my first All-Star game. I'm at the hotel. The bus is going to leave to go over there real early, too early, five hours before the game. And I just, I don't want to get there that early. So I, I, I said, like, yeah, I missed the bus. Okay, I'll find, I'll, get, I'll find a ride. So I'm outside maybe two and a half hours before the game, and it's about a 40-minute ride, and there's no, no transportation. I'm just out there like, oh, shoot. So this player comes up who's on the All-Star team, a good buddy of mine back in those days. And he's got a, like a, a big Cadillac, somebody's driving, got five dudes in there from Detroit. And so he's like, yo, Mark, you need a ride? I was like, yeah, yeah, can I? Yeah. So I jump in there, it's so six of us, three in the front, three in the back. We're riding out the Pontiac Silverdome, they start blazing up some weed. They just start smoking <laughs> some weed. They pass it my way, it's like, no, no, I gotta play. My boy's like, yo, no, this make you play better, man. Here, here, here. <laughs> like, oh. And so the, the, the contact, all that, so we get to the game and just, you know, I can imagine what I must have smelled like, you know, in that car ride for 45 minutes. We get to the Silver Dome, I get dressed, we're waiting in the tunnel to go out for the uh, warm-ups, and there's a guy with the uh, London Fog overcoat on, white guy, uh, long hair, and so um, he's just kind of waiting there. So as we get ready to run out, he takes off the overcoat, and he's got on a Kansas City Kings warm-up. Barry Bremen, he's a yeah. great imposter. Mm -hmm. He runs out there with us. And so I kind of look at him, and he's like, yeah, the uh, name on his uh, shooting shirt is Johnson from Kansas. I think it's Ali Johnson from Kansas City. So just pretend I'm your cousin. Let's just, I, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. Just to pretend I'm your cousin. We got, we got a, a little video clip of that, uh, <laughs> okay. that whole situation. <laughs> so this is from halftime. This is you walking out right here. And then coming up, uh, that's him right there, white dude. <laughs> Very grimace, yeah. Yeah, and he actually, that's halftime? Yeah. Or, or okay, because he actually warmed up with us, yeah. too. He came out there for warm-ups. So he must have he paid 
one of the ushers. Or something. He, he had to pay somebody to get that kind of access. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you can imagine, I'm a little buzz from the, from the secondhand smoke, just the secondhand smoke. Uh -huh, secondhand smoke. And, uh, you know, I got this dude coming out here, and, you know, he's like, be cool, man. I'm cool. I think Otis Bird saw him, might have snitched on him or something, yeah. and got him out of there. But, uh, but, but you know, but so, so yeah, it's, but seeing the jersey out there, but it, for me, again, my second year, I felt like, you know, this is overdue. I should have been an all-star last year, if I'm going to be, going to be honest. But it was, it was, you know, it was great to start that game. Um, maybe I started alongside Dr. J or something, so it was all good. Uh, so you got voted in the second year? Uh, uh, your first yes. year was voted in. Yeah, 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 first, yeah second year I got voted in. Yeah, right. all-star starter, babe. Damn. Yep. Gentlemen, what was, what was your first all-star experience like? What was it like for you to walk into that locker room and see your, your jersey hanging up? Well, yeah. I was geeked. <laughs> Shit, I was out. I, I know there was a video of me like, yo, do I get to keep, like, because it had the robe in it. With the, do I get to keep this? <laughs> like, so I was, I mean, I'm not even going to lie. I, it was probably one of the best moments because, you know, draft wasn't, you know, my draft moment wasn't. So that, that moment of, you know, being an all-star. Like, when I heard that I was an all-star, I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. You know, you're in the middle of the season. You hear, like, all right, cool, yeah, yeah, But when you get there and then you see everybody, like, every, like all, everyone in one area is like, oh, shh. Yeah. Damn. Like, and, I, I mean, I've bust y'all asses individually, right, but this, right. is, this is a whole <laughs> different thing right here. Uh, you know, so I was more, I was more like a little kid. Was that your 29-point-a-game year? Was that your, what year was No, that, that was 20, my 25.5. Okay. Right, so, like, uh, I got that because of Larry got hurt, broke his thumb. You know, so I was basically third on the team in, in the sense of, right. you know, production. And when he got hurt, I took over and took my production and his production up. So by the time he got back, I was the one. Who's one? Antoine? Antoine James? Who, who? Antoine was probably the number one option. Him or Larry was number one option. Okay. I was third. Okay. And then when he went out, I jumped yeah, in front of good. Antoine. I was averaging 25, so. Tim, what was your, your first experience like getting first to play? First and only? Hey, you were all-star. Nah, yeah. I'm nah like your dad said, like I should have made it. I felt I should have made it the year before. Like we had the best record in the East. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they, yeah. So, but yeah, nah, it was it was dope, man. I was excited. Um, we was playing here. Um, yeah, who don't want to play an All Star game in L.A.? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you? Oh, you the L.A. one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Four. Yeah. Yeah. It was dope. Nah, it, it, it was great, man. Um, I had my point guard there, so it made my job easy. You know, me able to score 17 in an All-Star game. Right? That's why you scored 17. Jay Kidd was yeah. like... Oh, yeah, I got my point guard there. <laughs> he was actually passing. Yeah. He was looking for you. I got my point yeah. guard there, so it's... Because yeah. I asked him how to approach him. He just said, be you. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know that he was <laughs> multi-time All-Star. I'm yeah. like, man, what I need to do, man, I don't... For every time, he said, shit, just be you. Yeah. Well, it's good to have a point guard on your side. Like, a quick story. I mean, I, uh, my mm -hmm. last All-Star game, fifth and final, with 86 in Dallas. That was a Reunion Spud, Arena. Spud Webb dunk game, dunk contest game. But I'm, I'm playing... Talk about your point guard. So I'm on the floor. Magic's got the ball in the middle. We're in transition. Worthy's on one side on the wing. I'm on the other side on the wing. I'm getting my steps together. One, one defender back. We're coming down. We cross half court. Get to right on the top of the key. Magic looks my way. And that's when I knew I wasn't getting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 look, no, no, look, no, look, no, look, you. Don't look that way. <laughs> Hit Worthy. Worthy came in and dunk. But I, mean, I, I knew right then. I was like, oh, man, don't yeah. look at me like. Don't look at me. Look the other way. But that's the point guard taking <laughs> care of his, taking yeah, care of his team, man. I can't be mad at him. Yeah, no, yeah I, okay. If we would have won, like I don't know everybody's stats in that game. Yeah. Like, if we would have won that, that game, I probably had a shot. Yeah, you know, MVP. At MVP. Because mm -hmm. yeah, sure. wasn't nobody scoring like yeah, that. No. But, like, back then, it wasn't like everybody how they, how that three ball is now and people scoring right. the way they are in the All-Star game. No, it was, well, does that do anything <clears throat> to you guys to loot the, 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 the significance of the records, the way the lack of defense being played and all the points these guys are scoring? Or you don't really give, give, a, give a crap? Um, it bothers I, me. I got to be, I got to. With just a regular, regular basketball in, or in an all-star game setting? Just this, this season? No, no, I'm okay. talking about all-star game. All-star okay, okay, okay. game, and you got guys scoring, like, you know, you got most points in all-star game history, you know, recently. These are guys. Like you, said, you, would, you, would, you would know better because, you know, I think you guys back then took it serious. Too serious, man. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you, you guys took it serious yeah. to the point where it was actually a basketball game. Yeah. Right? Right. Now... Like, even when I played, I remember when I jumped off the trampoline in Vegas, um, they didn't had a heart attack. 
the thought of it. Like, yeah. yo, you, you know we got the rest of the season getting ready for the playoffs. So, you know, when we went into the, you know, when I went into All-Star, it was more, yo, rest. Right. Because we got the second half of the season to try to make a yeah. push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me going into the, you know, to All-Star weekend anyway, it was team. Right. Right. So these guys are sitting here like, yo, I still got the team. This ain't even really important right. enough. Right. And, and I guess that wasn't the thought back then. I think the thought back then is a. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't the extravaganza. So you come, you know, I, I'd come in like on a Saturday morning or something instead of Friday. We had the banquet, uh, the dinner like Friday, uh, Saturday night. Bob Hope, I remember Bob Hope had a line uh, at our All Star banquet around eighty two in Cleveland, wherever it was in Cleveland. But he had the line, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to say there's a lot of drug use in the NBA, but there's a rumor that the Golden State Warriors landed at the Oakland Airport an hour before their team did, uh, before, <laughs> an hour before the team plane did. Uh -huh. stuff, you know, they, <laughs> High as a kite, <laughs> you know. You know, so we listen, Jonathan Winters. I mean, he was he yeah. he was all he was he was all something. But he was just motor. You know, I, I was sitting next to him on the dais, and he was talking a mile a minute. But so, so so we had that, and then the game. So it wasn't you know it just wasn't a big deal. You know, it wasn't like oh I got to get there and oh, participate in all the festivities. It was no, just, they making you do it now. Like yeah. you got to do all this stuff. Come in on Friday. Yeah, obligations. A yeah. lot of obligations. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like you were saying, like I went to the West. People don't know, like yeah, I was a one time All Star, but I changed conferences. Mm -hmm. And get your ass on out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, Jameson was happy. I know he was. <laughs> so, you dudes was like, whoo, he gone. He gone, whoo. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, because a lot of dudes, man. Like, but, yeah. If Denver would have, yeah, if Jersey would offer more, I would have. <laughs> it would have been year after year after year. No, nobody in the East, man. That's, I was, that's, and I, I was, I was wondering, going to the Eastern Conference. And we talked about it a little on the show, but do you, do you knowing what you know now, would you have stayed in the East? Not necessarily even with, with the Nets, but just stayed in the Eastern Conference? Probably so. Okay. I pro but the thing didn't, shit. The only other team in the East that had money at the time that offered me was Atlanta. And Lord knows what the hell that would have been. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what? Me at 26 in Atlanta? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, with a fair. max deal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, yeah, they was on drugs. That's why I say, how, how they gonna stop anybody? <laughs> how they gonna stop anybody? God damn, no, wait, it was wait, under wait. the influence. No, no, no. no. See, I heard you say that on, on Shannon, Shannon's show. Now, let me, let, me, let me set the record straight. Now, I did an informal survey of the amount of guys who were actually drug abusers on the <laughs> rosters. It was less than two, probably, per like 1.8. See, <laughs> see, well, see, key word in that phrase, you said abuse. Abuse. Well, well, abuse. Well, well, abusers. I mean, you know, Fucking users and abusers are two totally separate things two, now. Well, two totally different things. <laughs> so, I'm talking about to the point. Now, how many you, sir, if you were to change your word in that survey, well, well, how many of you motherfuckers well, was users? Well, I mean, you would, but, I bet that two would have been more like four and a half. Well, about the eight of us. Was no pity <laughs> People, they were, dudes weren't smoking weed in your era. There wasn't a lot of weed smoking going on. No, 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 there was. I mean, I mean, come on, there was. Yeah, was. I mean, that, was. I mean, ecstasy and all that. that no, that, no, that, no. That, we that, had, that, yeah, that, that wasn't my era. But that's fair. I mean, you know, ecstasy. I know a whole bunch of cats. You know, I could just look at them, and you know, this is like. 10, 15, 20 years ago, whatever, when it was a big thing back in those days. So, but no, but but, but, but my point is, so, so I mean, so you, but you might have four or five teams with nobody that was, you know, serious, serious drug abuser. You might have a, a team with three or four guys, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like rampant. And some of the best players in the league, without naming names, was, mm -hmm. you know, were, were <laughs> yeah. you know, doing what they were doing. So, you know. up. can you explain something? Um, because I, I read a rule, and you, you would be, you would know better. So, okay, so today, right, when everybody talks about the hand-checking rule, what was the actual hand-checking rule in the 70s versus the 90s? Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember. Was there a two-hand hand-check yeah. at first? I mean, I think the rule, the, the understanding, the principle was that if you stuck your arm and locked your elbow, Standard. they would call a foul. Even in your era. Yeah, but okay. as long as you had the elbow bent, you could pretty much guide a player. Now, before my era, in the early 70s with Norm Van Leer, Norm Van Leer I played with with the Milwaukee Bucks at the very tail end of his career, and he got called for a couple of early aggressive hand Truth. checks with two hands, and he kept complaining to Earl Strom, the official, and they called him for a third one. So the rest of the quarter, he played defense with his hands behind his back. You know, mm -hmm. He would just slide his feet. They gave him a tech for that because he was showing up the officials. So. Yeah, see, that's what I said. I read something where 
Okay, so there was they been two doing hand, shit for a long time. Yeah, so there was yeah. a two hand handshake. Yep, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think people got confused when they said the handshake is gone. There was a two hand handshake where you can really, you know, really take your man. Yeah, you can really early, take your man. Mid seventies, right before I got to yeah. the lead, that was like really, really physical. And then, and then eventually, it became the one hand handshake where everyone's getting confused. Like that handshake is still kind of in the day. Right. So there was thing when when Jordan was coming down and uh, Charles Oakley kept getting called. Right, it was like the two hand hand check is gone, and they're trying to get used to this new one. Right, and then th this guide win. I'm like, the guide win is not the one that people think was the greatest defense because the guide, this guide win, when you extend, I can hit that off. It was yeah. this two one that was controlling everybody. Right, when you're trying right. to drive, and I can just. I can funnel you both. Right. I said, that's the one they took off well, that really. And that made guys like Jim Price, you don't remember him in Louisville, but early 70s, Lakers, um, Bucks, some other teams. He's one of the top guard defenders, but he was just, you know, his forearms, mm -hmm. he was super strong. He would just, yeah, see that? foot speed was, was average. <laughs> but up here, he was just so physically aggressive. Jerry Sloan did the same thing with the yeah. Bulls when he was in the backcourt with Norm Van Leer. They would just beat you up and then not allow you to go where you wanted to go. So it was a lot tougher. So to like score back that's then. what I said. So like now, like people under the free throw line, you still have a handshake. There's yeah. still a handshake. But the difference is now guys are going down. They're going downhill. Which yeah. is, it's hard to handshake a guy going downhill. Right. Like if right. you looked at. Um, he just he just got called for it. He didn't get called for the. The hand check, look at Josh, Josh Hart. Josh Hart, I think it was, was it Josh Hart against LeBron? It was Josh Hart, he was hand checking someone. They didn't call the foul yeah. until he pushed. Pushed him, yeah. Right, so that's, that was the foul. That, that's what people don't like. He has a hand check yeah. on him, yeah. and he's behind him like normal. And then what he usually do is I can't guard him, I can't do this, I try to try to yeah. push him off that spot, and that's where they call a foul. They don't call a foul on the He hand. said, ain't no way you saw that. That's the one, yeah. There's no way you saw that. He said, there's no way you saw if that. If you look at it, he has the hand yeah. check on him. Yeah. That is just irrelevant today. The hand check that everybody think is a hand check that everybody complained about was the two-hand hand check that can just hold you. Right. The stronger guys can hold you yeah. from yeah. trying to drive around them. And guide you where they want you to Yeah, yeah, guide you. you, go, you know. Like, you can see he's yeah. holding with two hands, right. not the one hand that everybody... Keeps thinking the 80s had. It's like, ah, yeah, because it, ah, you so know, the, the person who probably did it the most that they probably used as a rule was, was Derek Harper. Derek Harper, yep. Mm -hmm. you, he, you, you're trying to back him down, and he's trying to, he's, I'm literally, I got your waist, yes, and yeah. like, um, you remember this? It was like, yeah, it's this and this, and it's just a little cuff, and I'm holding you yeah. on the sideline, so you can't go nowhere, goddammit, and that's what they took off. Yeah. That's why I play in the post. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I grab was, you. Oh. I grab your baseline side. Mm. Yeah, so you can't spin. Mm. Can't spin. If you get ready to twist, if I feel you, I let go. Yeah. Mm. So that's what I said. People, like, that's, <laughs> right? I grab you. Like, I never had this on the baseline side. Yeah. Never. Yeah. yeah. Everybody gone. Yeah. Everybody. Right? This, I feel that twitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I let go. Because I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, as soon as you turn that ball, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's details. So, Dad, Marcus, I'm professional saying I call you Marcus. Uh, yeah. When Mr. I need, Johnson? When, when I need some Mr. bread, Johnson. I call you Dad. Uh, <laughs> so you said All-Star Weekend wasn't as turned up or, you know, as much stuff going on as it is now. But for you guys in those 2000s, uh, what was your favorite part of All-Star Weekend? What was the worst part? Um, okay, so my the, the, the most excited I was for All-Star was, I think it was 2002. Was that Philly? It was either Philly. Yeah. G, 50 Cent just came out. G Unit. Yeah, I, yeah. I love how we can take music. Movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was it was Philly. Just, yeah, so you know, so basically everybody down in the lobby and you know, uh, 50 Cent, right? That whole G Unit. Move, so everybody got the tank tops and the G Unit on. Like everybody got first. Right? Just, just watching money. Yeah. Right, because you know I was broke, so just going down there, just watching shit you could never ever be a part of. <laughs> like, yeah, all the little nice ladies in here, yeah, I'm like the ball kid at this point, right? Just like, yeah. Man, is... Was that 02 or 03? 02. 02 it was, was my second Philly. year. Not 02. It was Philly, right? It was my right? second year. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was my second year because I played in the rookie so, sophomore. So 02 was Philly, right? Yeah, I played in the okay. rookie sophomore. So you played against Jay Rich? 
Yeah, Jay Richard freshman, there. right? Yeah, so you were talking about Jay Richard freshman, yeah. 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 So you know, it's wild. We were playing, I was at UCLA at that point, we played Villanova, and yeah. somehow ended up having to stay oh. in the fucking All-Star Weekend Hotel. And oh, literally, so you was there too? Most, yeah. most pimps fur coats. Yeah, that's it was like what? the most fur coats I've <laughs> ever seen yeah, Philly. in one well, lobby. Yeah, we, we had, there we had Villanova yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, Some reason they put us in the fucking All-Star Hotel. Well, y'all didn't come to D.C. then. <laughs> nah. DC was the year before. Uh, 2001. That one, that was when I, like, I realized that people used to talk about all the girls in the lobby and all that. Yeah. A bus pulled up outside the hotel. Mm. All girls? All girls got off. Yeah. Outside the fucking team hotel, bro. <laughs> I'm getting in excited DC. like I was going to get one. <laughs> <In> DC. <laughs> I was like. Oh. Hey, I, I'm acting no, like I heard the story one. before I got in the league. Like, man, there be girls in the oh. lobby all the oh, time. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. I'm at All Star Week before All Star Weekend. I ain't coming to every hotel. Yeah. Shit, where they at? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, we going down to the bar, hanging out at the bar till they close. Like, yep. man, ain't no women walking this lobby yet. Uh, yeah. Ain't seeing them but business people yeah, in there. Yeah. Stand the four season, like. Yeah. We got to that DC, that All Star. I'm like, yo, a bus pulled up outside the hotel. I was like, yo. What, what is that the work dynamic like? All Star Weekend? At the All Star Oh, weekend. it's unbelievable. It's like the Black Super Bowl, as oh, some it's, people it's, call it. Super Bowl ain't got nothing on there. Yeah, <laughs> bull, what? This is like, the All Star Weekend is like Instagram. What? Right? And you had the blue check before they made you pay for the Absolutely. blue check. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh. You sitting there pick. Listen. What? Picking them. Come on. They're trying it. to be a part of Let this. Let them know. They're trying to be a part of everything, so. <laughs> so, hey. Heavy demand, but also heavy supply of stars. So what's, what's nah, the hierarchy? Nah, Is there some no. dudes that aren't? The, I'm just I'm curious. Put it like this: the friend of the NBA player, it damn near has first dibs. <laughs> like you, you damn near have first <laughs> dibs at the All Star game. Uh, now you be sitting there mad like, damn, you pulled that? Like yeah, you know, I, I was I told him I played for the Bobcats. Like that's usually the the, the Bobcats and yeah. some of them bottom feeding teams. There ain't nobody watching. You ain't nobody never, watch. on <laughs> never on TV. Never on TV. Never on national television. If you look at the national TV slate, hit one of those teams at the bottom. That's not good. If you think I'm lying, chat. Look, if you six, seven, and above, slim, go to All Star Weekend. And just have a jersey or whatever. <laughs> just say little duffel bag, uh, anything. Just look like you. Yeah, just look like you a hooper. Like walk player. around the lobby with your sunglasses right, on. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yo, uh, walk around with your sunglasses on. Just, right. Yeah, you look, like look, you, you look play, important. Yeah, you play on the Bobcats. You play on Orlando Magic. Yeah, you, you play on Utah Jazz. Get you your, good money, boy. Yeah. Go get you a little crossbody or <laughs> something. Yeah, little little, little, little fanny pack. Or a little, or a little uh, knockoff Louis bag or something. You know. I'm saying. It's hard nowadays, though, the internet and smartphones, because you used to be able to get that off early 2000. Oh, no. Nobody would know that. No, you're right. They got the internet. Now, now, but, you might not, no, no, no. But for real. Enlarge but, that but, motherfucker. But, like, where he at in the team picture? Yeah, like, oh. you, can, you can get away with it I'm a little bit. I'm, yeah, 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 I'm on a 10 day. I'm on a 10 day. I'm on a 10 day. Limited Wi Fi. You just have to be at places where, where Wi Fi issues. But you got to talk about that. And for me, <laughs> just from an outsider's perspective, uh, for the most part, all stars are the alpha on their team, for the most part. So what happens when you put up to 24 alphas in the same place at the same time. Like, who are the alphas of the alphas on those teams that you guys played on? Not necessarily alpha, just the person. Whoever has the biggest personality is going to always have the biggest personality. It don't matter. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, when when I was there, it was more of like Shaquille O'Neal is going to be Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. You know, I remember um, it, we had a little, it was a little tense in the locker room um, that. It was the Vegas year because Amici just came out. So John Amici just came out. So we all got like, hey, you know, don't talk about Amici, you know, mm. the, you know, the LGBT, you know. So everybody's all right, cool, cool, cool. And then as soon as the media came in, Shaq took off his what's the name, got the uh, silver thong jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Amici, y'all. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, shit. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'm John Amici, because I think what happened was John Amici came out and then Tim Hardaway said something that yeah. everybody didn't agree with. Yeah. Right. It was like, it was real tense. Yes, Tim did. Yes, yes, Tim did. And then, you know, Shaq broke all that tension with John Amici, y'all. <laughs> you know, and then everybody got in the spirit and just, well, it was kind of like, all right, fun loving again. It was a great mutual admiration society too uh, when when we played um, 86 I remember I think Clyde Drexler was on the Western Conference team and I mean he was just pumping me up and how much he loved my game and how much he respected this and that and I'm you know I was a big Drexler fan since Houston mm -hmm. University of Houston 
And uh, I think I might have, like, just give me some of that, give me some of that spring you got on your legs. You felt <laughs> I could use, you know, it was just a real good feeling because everybody was real respectful. I don't know how that was in, 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 as the years progressed, 20 years later in you guys' era, but I don't know if it was, it was more competitive or more hatred or more salt. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, but back then everybody was just happy to kind of be an all-star and celebrate the greatness that was in the room, mm -hmm. if, if you will. I think MJ was on that 86 team. I don't think he played or he might have been hurt that year. But yeah, MJ, yeah, yeah. Patrick Ewing, like, what was it like being around those young guys, kind of the, 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 the future well, of the league, the guys who were taking over? Well, my, my, my story with those two is uh, it, it was at, uh, that was Dallas. So, so after the uh, dinner uh, and, and the comedian or whatever, Willie Nelson was going to be performing. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not in the country in Western. Let me go back to the hotel. So I was outside waiting to catch a cab. Here comes Patrick Ewing, here comes Michael Jordan. And so we all three are kind of outside waiting to try and get some. We didn't have limos and anything like that, just no making transportation. This brother comes up in this old kind of older Lincoln Continental. He's like, yo, Marcus, Patrick, Michael, y'all need a ride back to the hotel? Like, yeah, so like, get on in. So we got on in, I'm sitting in the middle between Michael and Patrick, well, and Michael sitting in the middle between Patrick and me. And so I'll never forget this, and this is your Michael was hurt, foot was broke, missed a bunch of games, came back, had the 63 against Boston. And so we were all talking again, mutual admiration. Michael Jordan was like, like he said before, yo, 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 I loved your game, Marcus. You know, you know, I, you, I, you know, I had my you know, poster on my wall when I was in North Carolina. I was, you know, Patrick was saying a bunch of good stuff. So then Patrick said to Michael, he's like, look, look, MJ, when you get back, don't be bringing that stuff inside to my office. And so Michael, I'll never forget this, Michael said, Pat, I got a hide and seek show you ain't even seen yet. <laughs> I got a hide and seek show you ain't even seen yet. And then when he came back, he dropped that 63 on Boston. But it was the coldest. <laughs> Michael had like a fur fur on a on a long on a full length leather coat. But the way he said it, you know, was just a, the coldest. I got a look. I got a hide and seek show you ain't even seen yet. And just got to look off. Hide and seek show. <laughs> I got a hide and seek show. And then he came back with that 63 against Boston. I'm like, there's a hide and seek show. <laughs> <laughs> there's that hide and seek show he was talking about. Yep. So MJ in the middle. He wouldn't take that middle, I mean, as the years progress. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't yeah, take yeah, that middle yeah. seat away, y'all. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah, y'all nah. gotta find your own ride. Exactly. You got middle seat, MJ, very, very early. <laughs> well, young, yeah, he, I was playing with the Clippers, man, and I sent like a, like a, uh, 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 Detroit, like a like a flare screen on him. We called it Detroit screens back in the day. So he came to the screen real hard with a forearm. And I was like, I grabbed, say, hey rookie, watch the screen. He's like, hey, I was like, hey rookie, watch the elbow. He's like, hey bet, watch the screen. You know, I was like, oh, okay, all right, okay. all right. You know, he, he was he was he was real feisty even back then. This is before I knew, you know, that uh, he was a fan of mine. But uh, he was real feisty even back then, man. So for all y'all, we talk about that on court dynamic. Obviously, Canyon, you were fortunate to have your teammate Jason Kidd out there who actually liked passing the ball. Mm -hmm. But for you guys' experience, what's that dynamic like for you? Are guys giving up the rock? Is there a lot of ball hogging? Like <laughs> what, you know, how hard is it to actually get the ball? And, and also, what's the easiest way well, to try to get buckets? Well, we're playing the Lakers. I mean, it's not the Lakers. We're playing at the Forum where the Lakers played uh, back in the day. 83, right? 83 all the Marvin, Marvin Gaye National Anthem mm -hmm. game, which was off the hook. And so I had um, flown a, a young kid, Maltese Williams, from Milwaukee, for the all -Star. He got he was in a fire, went in a coma. He was like a big fan of mine, 12 years old or whatever he was. I came into the hospital room and he kind of came out of the coma. And they were like, Mr. Johnson, it's a miracle. He's, he's been in a coma for like two months. You know, you come in, say some words. So I said, look, you know, young man, you keep getting better. I'm going to take you to the All-Star game in L.A. So I took him out to the All-Star <laughs> game during the All-Star break. Now, and I want to get MVP. It's like, mm -hmm. I got to get MVP. It's a great story. You know, if I can get MVP, I can get a trophy to Maltese Williams. He's in the wheelchair. It'd be a great story. Came out there, and uh, the very first time on the floor, it's a two-on-one. I got the ball. Sidney Moncrief, my teammate, is a little bit ahead of me. And so get the ball back, you give it up early. Uh, you know? yeah, yeah. And it, we've done this hundreds of times before. I give it to him. He gives it back to me. I throw it down. Jack Sigma's backpedaling on defense, 6'11". And so we're, I'm pushing. Sidney's there. I give it up to Sidney. It's the All-Star game. Sidney gets it and just attacks Jack. He didn't even look at me again. I mean, he, didn't, he wasn't thinking about passing the ball back. He made a, made a real nice move and finish. I think Sidney might have had 26 points in that game. I wound up having a real bad game and just feeling like low as, as, as well crap because uh, I wanted to do it and, and make it special for this kid and all that. But looking back on it, I mean, it was special for the kid anyway, you know. But the kid, I remember he was at my house for the little post-game party. <laughs> And I think may, I may have told him, like, I'm going to get the MVP for you. And he was like, so what happened to the MVP? 
I think I went upstairs. I think I went upstairs and cried in my in my, in my parents' bedroom. <laughs> I was like, "What's wrong with you?" I was like, "Hey, nothing, nothing." <laughs> yeah, I was so disappointed. Man. You're, you're for yourself. What was that? It was a long night that night too. Long night that night. Back in LA, I already know. We already know what it was. Dude, long night. What was that dynamic like for you on the court playing with these stars? I mean, from the first game, second game on, just in terms of actually getting the ball and being able to score. You know, I'm, I'm the PG, mm. so you know. Um, I remember this is my year. I'm starting, right? So this is the Vegas, Vegas year, right? Uh, the, the, my second year, you know, that was that. Den, that was the um, the Detroit Pistons, all four, and then even in the, in the All Star game, me and Joe Johnson sitting there, and we we kind of like, cause they served all four of them and. Get, in together, like to make this type of history. So we are like, there's some bullshit right here, <laughs> right? So I don't remember that year. Yeah. The 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 06, 07, I'm starting, right? So uh, first play of the game, right? Eddie Jordan calling up play, like when we get the ball, this we're gonna run, right? And uh, he draws a play up for a back door for Dwayne Wade. Like you know, you're looking at it like. Where am I? Hell no, nah. that ain't the play that I like to run the first play. The first play is always for me. Like, you my coach. <laughs> got the ball, uh, we got the tip. I see Dwayne Wade back door, just like Coach Drew it. Like, oh, he open. Three. <laughs> 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 Nigga, this is just like I don't know how you drew it, coach. But this is how he it's supposed open. to be. He ain't no through. Hey, through. Bang three. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne Wade was wide open. This would have been the nicest, but not. Nah, come on, coach. You can't call the play. Dwayne ain't say anything for the op. Dwayne ain't say anything to you. Nah, you nah. I ain't get the ball the rest of the game, but you can't call yeah. it for the op, coach. Right, right. <laughs> Wait, did you? You made it. Hell yeah, I man. It was a okay. bank though. I ain't yeah. called nothing. Oh, I mean, you good? You good? Yeah. Yeah. Went in. Got me a little three. Oh, got me a little yeah. good three. Like it's supposed to happen. Uh, it came over like, again. You in LA? <laughs> you in LA? 2004. Jay Z, Beyonce, courtside, star-studded event. What was that dynamic like for you? And, and how long did it take you to get comfortable playing in that game, or just coming right away, ready to do it? It was easy. Like I said, J Kid was there, man. So I wasn't worried. I wasn't. I'm not. People that's there, I that shit don't. I'm not. I'm not starstruck. He was number happened. one pick, bro. Okay. Star Trek comes from like star last fan, no, like no, around. No, no, I still, I'm a fan of people, but I'm <laughs> yeah. not, not right. Star Trek. I don't bother people when they out. Um, <laughs> um, but no, it was it was dope, man. Having um, having J K there, and of course, uh, shit, when I was all Star Trek, K J was born, so I had my eldest there. He, you know what I'm saying, was special for me. Him. Um, but yeah, now nah, me being out there and having J K, it was it was it was like just another game. Shit, mm -hmm. to be honest. It was just another game over the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the same action. Like, yeah. run, jump, <laughs> run, deep. jump, dunk. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. I always put too much pressure on myself. I mean, just, you know, I wanted to do so well. And and and, and, and the All-Star games then, I mean, it was for the, the great one-on-one -on -one players, Doc, George Gervin, I mean, even Larry to, to a certain extent. I mean, they were the ones that kind of got, you give it up, you weren't go, you know. Yeah. You, it wasn't like, we gonna move it around and you'll get it back and get it in the mid-range you know, mid area where you're coming off a screen. You give it up, you know, you had to get it off the offensive glass pretty much because they were looking to do something. They, they were, everybody was aware of the, of the, of the, uh, the prominence of being the MVP. I, and I wasn't so, I just wasn't caught up except that one game in LA with the, with the kid uh, who was in the fire, Maltese Williams. But other than that, man, it was almost like a, I won't say a nuisance, but you know, the, those two or three days off, if yeah. I could have you know, done something else, you know, I would have done something else. But I mean, I was honored, don't get me wrong. And, I, and it meant more after I stopped being named All-Star teams, you know, later <laughs> in my career. But, but at that time when I was making them every year for three or four years in a row, it's like, you know, here we go again. Another, <laughs> some more pressure. <laughs> here we go again. I was watching, uh, it was, uh, I think it was, K it was KG and, um, and Paul Pierce talking about uh, one year, all, uh, there was an all-star game where two, two, two. Everybody had their own clique and everybody, like, they switched the seats around so they teammates didn't sit next to each other. So it was like Chris Bosh, Wade, and LeBron. Mm -hmm. Right, it was um, him, Paul Pierce, and I don't know if it was Rondo, but I know uh, Ray Allen. 
I think it was only they only. No, nah, it was three. It was, it was three, three of them. Year. Yeah, it was three. And then you had Orlando. They had their two. Like everybody, it was just like clicks. And they <laughs> said so they they sitting there just they not talking to each other. They just all and I was like, damn, that's rare though. That's rare when you have it's multi team. There's three players, two players from each team, and that's how y'all set. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we got beef with them. Yeah, I wear this shit. I said next to the course, you know, my life is yeah. a kid, but yeah, it's... So, what was the wildest thing that you guys saw during All-Star Weekend, on the court, off the court, anything going on? Listen, the best part, listen, the best part of it is when you get to hear, like, players trying to holler at girls, the game that is being spoken, the shit that is being said. <laughs> now, you hear, like, listen, you, you hear some rude, you hear, you hear some of the rudest stuff ever. Like, some stuff I just had to, yeah, I'm going to use that line one day. Just one day. Like, you know, I can't use it the same way you used it, but I'm going to use it. Uh, what, what dude was like, I'm not the prettiest nigga in the world, but I can buy that thing. And I'm like, yeah, he ain't pretty, but I mean that's a that's 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 a, <laughs> that's a good line. I'm gonna use that. And but that's like uh, just at the bar, just listening to people talk, you just be like, yo, y'all are wild, bro. Yeah. Y'all, <laughs> this is wild. Obviously, the '70s, '80s, a lot 70s, more, '80s, a lot more turned up uh, than it is now. Uh, what, what was the, the wildest, the craziest thing you saw during the All Star Weekend? I mean, I mean, just I, I go back to that Barry Bremens, oh, yeah. the great imposter in Detroit, was probably the craziest thing, but. You know, we weren't into um, the the really wild partying. I mean, everybody kind of did their own thing with their, you know, went their own way, and um, so I, it just it wasn't a lot of collective craziness going on. And there was some individual <laughs> specific craziness going on, but uh, it was more like that back in the back in the seventies and eighties. And it came from from your experience in L.A. Early 2000s. No, it just ain't the shit that you see. It's the shit that you hear about <laughs> after the fact. Yeah. Like, man, you motherfuckers crazy. crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. What happened? What hotel was this? Yeah. Man, I'm glad I wasn't at that. Like, you just, just like, you like, man, you Here's wait. Some shit, yeah. yeah, like it's them stores. You and that All Star game. <laughs> Your Vegas? Listen. Vegas, boy, yeah. Man. Yeah. You're out there. Yes. I wasn't playing that season. Mm -hmm. So I had them. I ain't had nothing to get back to. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I was getting my knee scope. So I had micro fracture surgery in November. I was healing and I had to go get my left knee cleaned out of scope right after All-Star break. So I, I'm in Vegas from Thursday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. I show up and get surgery. They like, uh, your blood pressure is abnormally high. <laughs> uh -huh. um, what's going on? Uh -huh. I was like, well, I'm, I ain't changed nothing in my diet. I ain't da da da. I said, well, I did just come from Vegas. <laughs> they was like, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, they was like, yeah, we're going to have to give you a couple bags of IV before we can, so we can start this procedure. <laughs> I'm like, so yeah, I know you, you to conk out in this bitch. <laughs> you be back in LA for a few days and now you got to get up out of here. But before we let you go, uh, <clears throat> you celebrate your birthday every year with the annual dunk. Mm. Uh, you did it last year on Gill's Court. Here at Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Start, that's, we'll, we'll, yeah, that started the Gills Arena. That that's was, what, you helped yeah. help the Gills Arena. That started right, right. Multiple jacket shirts, uh, getting the dunk off. You turned 68 uh, this year. Do you have one more birthday dunk left in you? Yeah, I think so, man. I was out with uh, your, your, your baby sister, Shiloh, my daughter, this morning. She got me up at 5.30 to get some shots up at, at 24 Hour Fitness. 24 Hour Fitness got this one rim that's, you know, a little bit lower. You know, uh -huh. got the one a little higher than one. So that is a low ram. I, I did a few jumps, and you know how I am. I mean, it, the first few jumps are nasty. I yeah, got just nowhere near close. So those mm -hmm. first few are nasty. So I think I got those out of my system. <laughs> and so uh, 68, my high school, Crenshaw High School, I'm, I'm writing a book with uh, Charlie Rosen about Crenshaw, the Crenshaw culture, and all the great uh, athletes and entertainers and songwriters and musicians and, 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 and uh, politicians and lawyers and doctors that came through there. You played against Crenshaw, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I played against your son. He was, yeah, on, the, he was on the bench. Okay. Or, uh, he, he got to watch the greatness. Talk to you about that. But, 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 but <laughs> the point is, I, I may go back to Crenshaw. Crenshaw was op opened in 1968. I just turned 68. A little bit of, little bit of synergy there. Mm -hmm. So I think I may go back to Crenshaw. I got to check and see uh, with my best friend, Ed Waters. The uh, his mom is Maxine Waters. He's been coaching there. I played with him in high school. Um, he's coaching there for the last 20 years or so. So I got to make sure that, uh, you know, we can, you know, 
As we discussed, the, the rims are Crenshaw, uh, standard rim 10 feet. Uh, Crenshaw notorious for having the, the lower 10 two yeah. and a 10 three <laughs> rim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The rim is not 10, it, it is, it is yeah. above 10 feet. Yeah. So we'll it's see. better than Sierra Canyon. Oh, yeah, see, yeah, see, it can put them on the nine five. Oh, do, like, they? do they? Do they? What? Yeah, like what, what? when they have? Uh, that's where I need to go to get my. Where we'll be going to Sierra Canyon? <laughs> now, what you do is when they had a little workouts, when they do like a little pre pre draft, when they do pre draft workouts, they lower that one side. Do they? Okay. <laughs> and everybody be ducking everybody head over the rim. Right, 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 right. So. <laughs> like, come on, y'all. We but, can see it. But Crenshaw for years had the one rim about nine yeah. ten, and the other one about ten and three. three. It's yeah. always so, so yeah. second half. Those those guys that were just dunking so easily they get hung yeah. like, what the hell's going on so, so we, yeah, i'm gonna do it man i'm gonna do it i've been, right. I've been working i got faith out. in you I, I will be there filming it yeah as i always yeah. am i'll yeah. never let stardom get to my head right. <laughs> come back yeah, i mean you, 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 do, you don't want to maybe start it like what uh, after when you're 55 Blake, i want to say Blake yeah. griffin's uh jumping over the key i think i jumped yeah. over or, or like a matchbook with car bd yeah with bd yeah. threw him the love yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it was easy then it was real easy then at 55 how old are you 46. Still dunking real easy? Oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you got 10, 15 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. with so, ease. But, man, but but now, 68, woo! <laughs> any major so, surgeries? Huh? You have any major surgeries? I had a hip replacement July 25th okay. of last year. Now, right. the, the guy that did it, Don Sanders, out of UCLA, I went to college with. Wait, when did you get that hip surgery? July 25th. But he told me, um, this was July 25th, he told me that once uh, six months or so passes by that he put enough padding and stuff in there that I should be able to do everything I could do uh, before it flared up. And it actually flared up on my birthday when I dunked on this court out here. Uh -huh. I, you know, it took me, I remember it took about 20 times yeah. before I got it done and I had the bad hip then, it was flaring up then. So I had a hip, hip replacement July 25th and he put a bunch of stuff in there that, that he says is gonna, gonna help me with it. And he, he sent me some uh, video of uh, some mixed martial artists in their 60s who were doing double kicks and ballerinas doing hops and leaps and all that and just showing me kind of what's possible at 60 uh, with the hip replacement. So we'll see. We'll see. I've been working out, man, six days a week. We are optimistic. Do not waste my time if I come pull up. Uh, Mr. Johnson, we appreciate you. <laughs> Pulling up to Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going yeah. to my car. Get my other gun. Uh -oh. Shoot everybody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you want to hop up, we still have more show to do. We do? A little bit more, Gil. Oh. We got to get our money for it. All right. <laughs> we appreciate you so much for coming through. I'll holler yeah, at you. Great job. Yes, sir. Job. Marcus Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Right yeah, do not hit the uh, Jumbotron. Mm -hmm. He does not have umbrella policy. Gil, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no insurance at this house. <laughs> so let's talk. Uh, we got one more thing to cover quickly. Just uh, Jason Tatum. Uh, Jason Tatum rides a superstar in the NBA. Wasn't an easy one. His dad, Justin, St. Louis Hoops legend, currently coaching the Illawarra Hawks in the NBL, poured a lot into making sure that Jason lived up to his full potential as a hooper. So during a recent interview with Graham Bessinger, uh, Tatum talked about the difficulty of having a father that is a coach and balancing that, that father-coach relationship with that father-son relationship. In, in his words, that you actually hated having your dad as coach earlier in life. Why? Because it, it kind of put a strain on our relationship. I feel like I missed out on like a father-son relationship. Like me and my dad only ever went to games or practice and to get haircuts. Like we didn't go to amusement parks. We didn't go to picnics or fishing or like really have father-son talks. Because uh, it was just all basketball. It was extremely tough on me. Like cuss me out in front of everybody, you know, um, embarrass me, humiliate me, throw the ball at me, just because he wanted, in his eyes, he wanted me to be the toughest, he wanted me to, to be the best, and that was his way of like, if he made me upset, I would play better. And in a sense, I did, right? I would get so upset, I would get so angry that I would play better. So, Kenny, you have a son in the league, Gil. Uh, you have a few kids that will be there soon. Uh, how hard is it bouncing the relationship between being a, a coach, mentor on the basketball side, and being a dad? Well, it's funny. It was easy. It, it's it's been easier for me because my son didn't start off as a basketball player. He started off as a soccer player, right? And then entered basketball and wasn't that good, right? So you know, just watching other parents put so much pressure on the idea of seven, eight-year-olds being NBA players, it kind of 
that kind of gave me the the path to go, right? For most part, it was just just being a fan, and then you know once he got good enough to say, "Yo, you want to train?" You know, training him and like me training him, I'm hard, right? I'm when I train, it's like this is how we're gonna train if you want to be a certain type of player. Once he plays, that's how you play the game. You're not gonna hear from me, right? There's nothing, so you don't need to look at me and do all that, right? So, you know, it's I'm a father when you're playing. I'm the coach when we're training, right? And that's how I separated the two. So, um, I've coached him. I've I've, I've coached like uh, I coached him for a couple weekends. Um, it was fine because it's <laughs> a couple weekends. Yeah, because you know me, it's I just want everybody to shoot the fuck ball. Right, you know what I mean? Just get up and down, we're gonna press full court and everybody shoots. So, you know, with that idea of everybody getting shooting, there's really no miss, you know, there ain't no like, yo. So I don't really have to yell at him, you know, in a sense of everybody's getting the same treatment and I want everybody to shoot. You ain't shooting the ball, get the fuck out of the game. Right, that's, that's how I, I was coaching. Um, but for the most part is, you know, our relationship is, is solid because it's once we done training, then it's father, son. Okay. And Ken, you've talked about, you know, not having a dad in your life, but, you know, taking on that role with KJ, mm -hmm. seeing KJ get to the NBA, <clears throat> mm -hmm. see his dream fulfilled. So how hard was that relationship from a basketball perspective versus just being a parent? No, mine was easy. Um, I never trained KJ. Because uh, I, I know me. <laughs> no, I just, like, I learned early. Like, we were at the park, and KJ just, because he's ambidextrous, the way his brain works, mm -hmm. he's ambidextrous. Like, on the court, he shoot right in, everything else left handed so he used to shoot with both hands. So when he was starting to take it serious, I think he might have been 12. We're at the park, I'm telling him, listen, you gotta start, you gotta pick a hand, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you can't be serious about basketball shooting with both hands, right? It just, it's going in, but it looked fucking crazy. Yeah. So when I'm talking to him like that, and he walks off, <laughs> and I got the ball in my hand, and I caught myself, uh -huh. <laughs> right? And this is younger me, uh -huh. this is, and I, and I caught myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, this is going to turn him. Like, mm -hmm. this is horrible. So I, hey, man, I'm talking to you, bro. Like, when I'm talking, don't you ever walk off. Mm -hmm. So it we went from me about to hit him in the back of the head with the ball <laughs> to me having a conversation with him. And I was like, yeah, like, I can go in the gym and watch him work out, and I can, while somebody's doing what they do, mm -hmm. if I see things, and I know I'm always going to help him to get better. So that's what it was for me. Finding the people that do what they do and me critiquing as, like I'm not gonna <clears throat> sit in the gym and watch him do a drill or do some shit that I know is not gonna be effective. Mm -hmm. I, man, we're not finna do that, bro. We gonna, so I was, I was more of that and as he got older and then that, I'm saying he played back to back state champions, I hear we know that, but like those years it was more before that, it was more body language stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm hard on you about your body language. Mm -hmm. When he was in the ninth, 10th grade, body language. Like, that's, you're going to hoop, but I'm, I'm more, I was more into that. I was on his ass about that. Junior, senior year, it was more about just the game. Mm -hmm. Junior year, me just pouring everything because I saw he could take it, mm -hmm. whether it was good or bad. So I mean, he, if I saw some shit that I need to chew him out about, I did it. But most of the time, it was me in public, I'm his biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody ever see me cut, like, at the games, I'm, I'm like, hey, yo, man, what you? But nothing to me, me attacking him in the public, public eye. Say that for when we get in the car. Mm -hmm. If I have something negative to say to him, this, that, and the like, I'm gonna save that for our private time. Yeah. But to Jason Tatum's point, like, I get it. Like, it's, and when he said it, I was like, damn, was I? But no, nah, like I, I had moments before KJ started playing, and that we those intimate times, amusement parks, and those things, yeah. right? So when he said, "I'm like, damn, did I only?" <laughs> but it's tough. But it's see, he the the the, the I would never coach him. The difference is he's the coach. Yeah. So now his relationship him. is a little different because, and this is the problem with father sons father relationship. Daughters. Sports. When you're coaching your own kid, what you end up doing is this. You're ruining your relationship with the kid 
because you're trying to prove to the other players that there's no favoritism. So what ends up happening is everything you want to say to the other kids, you don't, and you just throw it all on yours Absolutely. because you think you can mend it when you get home and you can buy him ice cream. And then, so what ends up happening is you treat your son worse than everybody else, and that child doesn't understand that. Not at all. Right? So you want to not be a favoritism type of you know, coach, but you are. You're favoring the other players and giving all your, 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 your child the brutal, what's the name, when technically it should be the, the opposite. You should really technically be like LeVar Ball, where motherfucker, ah, <laughs> I'm here, I'm going to big up my kid. Right, I'm going to big up my kid, really, I don't give a fuck about yours. That's really how you really want to do it, because the other way you creating this... Give that some of the realest shit you, you've ever said. Okay, I know you're coaching your daughter right now, and that's oh, a, little yeah. bit, a little bit different. I'm coaching my son right now. Like, baseball, Josiah, fine. I don't really know shit about baseball. Uh -huh. Other coach, whatever. Just make sure you, you, know, you got your stance. But to your point, I feel like as I take a step back, Cause I can't yell at these other kids. kids. That's yeah. my logic. Like, I can't yell at them. I can yell at you because fucking, you know, but. Yeah, so you just keep like, it, it can be a loose ball and your son over here. And you be like, why can't you just go get it? Like, wait, what? what? I'm not even. I ain't even in the game I, yet. I can't yell at that bad, sorry motherfucker right there. And that's what ends up happening. Yeah, I can't. I got to yell the instructions to him that I want and hope that the other kid other, hears. Other here. I know the parents are watching. Yeah, that's why I would not like, I. For one, I, I know I can't coach. Like, I couldn't have coached. Like just the younger, the, my, the younger me when KJ was younger and Cameron was younger. Like, no, nah, I couldn't have coached them. Them wasn't nobody else's kids. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't. It, it wouldn't have went over well. Like yeah, yeah. at all. Yeah. Zero understanding. <laughs> zero. Deal. Zero patience. Like, no, so I, I have the girls too. So you know, as easy as my boys could, I have girls, and. Oh, I'm saying it for And when they're both working out, and that, that'd be the problem. If I'm working the girls out, the boys can't be there. The reason is the boys are just going to go, and then the girls going to take a couple minutes, and I'd be like, yo, did y'all wake up to do this? Because if y'all woke up to say your stomach hurt, y'all could have stayed the fuck home. Right? Y'all could have stayed home, sit on the side, patty cake, whatever you want, but we trying to work here. Like, we trying to get 500, 600 shots, so what ends up happening is when they're working the girls, the boys, eat, the boys are out working, and I'm going to judge, this is hoop. Hoopers, your stomach hurt every time we work out. I, listen, no one cares, okay? Your opponent don't care, so why should I? And that be that. So, but when the boy's not there, it's like, all right, I, I got, we got four hours to take 100 shots. Cool. Okay, your stomach hurt again. You need another water break. Okay. All right, I got professional water, water break drinkers over here. Nobody want to be no hooper, so my girls don't like, like working out with me. Because yeah. I don't want to hear water. Like, I've never seen Steph Curry drink water while he was playing the game, right? So if you want to drink water, go sit on the, you going to, listen, when you're on that bench, you got all the water you want to drink at your disposal. She going to become, <laughs> oh, so Steph Curry, so, 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 so not here, camel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I be sitting there like, bro, like, I can't. <laughs> and when you I look at patience with the girls. I can't even talk you. talking about. When you look at yeah. Tatum and, and, but where he's been able to get yeah. assistant top five player in the league, it seems like that methodology worked out. Like, you got to be hard. I think that's what's been lost a lot now with this generation is the coaching. Like, yeah. the difference between bullying and coaching. Like, coaches are tough. They want the best out yeah. of you. So, in times, you're going to feel bad, but yeah. now you're mentally tough enough that you can play at the highest level. Like, I don't know the relationship now. I would love to know their relationship now. I hope it's better than that because he said, like, he don't, like, it was, it was tough on him. Yeah. So I would love to know their relationship now. And hopefully it's thriving in the, in the right direction, man. Um, yeah, it's, but it's, it's, it's. Because you, let me cut you off, like, it's, I hooped. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it. I'm going to live vicariously through my son and I'm going to put all this shit on his plate. And to, to, to add on what you said, I can't yell at them, so I'm going to put it on you. Mm -hmm. And now you put all the pressure on him to make it and all of that. Just too much for a child. And then, too, 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 too much. So I didn't make it. You got to make it. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think, you know, I think once he gets older, like I think like Jason understanding now, now that he's a... He has a child, he understands it now. You know, the, like, the grandfather is the better father, and, you know, he gets to be a better father because you made it, mm -hmm. right? So all the shit that, you know, 
that I put you through, you there. You, you there. Everything you about to, you there. You, you, you took it. You there. And, you know, sometimes as, as the children of that, you have to sit back and say, the only way I would have, would have, the only reason I'm here is because of how it was. That's it. Right now, so, you know, the relationship then probably wasn't father, son, then, right? It was more, you know, drill sergeant. Now I get to have that relationship as father, son. And I ain't gonna do it that way. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get to have father, son with my, like, now now we can go fishing. You know, now we can do all that. That, that. This is when you do it, the golfing and all that, because then there was a goal in mind and I was looking for a father, but, you know, I, I, I had a coach. You know, now I don't need you as a coach, now I can need you as a father. So, you know, you, you have time. That's why when I, like, see Steph, like, you know, when we went to go see Steph, you know, um, up in Baltimore and him going... You know, him and his dad is there. Him and his dad is having a shooting contest against each other. Like, you, you get to see the father-son now, yeah. you know, as adults. And, you know, they're golfing with each other and all that stuff. And, and it's kind of like, okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's for yeah, sweet. It's definitely not. So stop yelling at your son, Josiah. I'm, that's, that's what I took away from this conversation. I don't yeah, be no, yelling, fine, but no, I mean, instructing, uh, instructing very Yeah, no, I'm that way with my daughter. No, no, like, I'm, she's nine. She just, started, <laughs> she just started playing basketball, mm -hmm. right? And... But I see her enthusiasm about it. So with her enthusiasm, I'm, I probably, my expectations were a little too <laughs> premature. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm yeah. From where her skill set is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> so I had to dial myself back. I'm like, okay, she just fucking started playing. Yeah. Right? She's already trying to shoot threes and stuff at nine from the top of the key. So I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> I let her do her, but I'm still. Cause you know, but we talking about this. You walk in that gym and you coaching the team versus how the other coaches look at you. You know what I'm saying? And if they feel like they got a win on Kenyon, of course, oh, as yeah, opposed yeah, to the yeah, team. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. It's a, you, you but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's oh, no. oh, they ain't beating the girl. They want to beat me. Yeah, but I but think yeah. about Kobe and that squad. So if Kobe and that squad could get smacked up and then come back and win by 100 the next year, that's kind of always in the back. Oh yeah, of my head. I'm not worried. Like we're just taking mental notes. The right enthusiasm now. that she is showing. I'm like, huh, and a five year old. So my son, he five. He ain't. About to be six, but yeah, that, the oldest kids didn't play at this age, so KJ did. KJ had a ball out the womb. Mm -hmm. So you, had, you every time you saw him around the house, when he could walk, he had a ball. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but no, nah, it's different, like Gil said, to little girls. You got, yeah, you got to have white gloves. Yeah, you got yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to own your pair of white gloves if you're going to deal with your daughter in sports. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, so it's this thing I hear, I be seeing his dad and his daughter, she's a softball player. You ever seen this? Mm -mm. Oh, listen, yo. <laughs> they, be, they didn't build some little pitching thing. She plays softball. I don't know if it's old or if it's newer. But he, he be on her ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Just uh, imagine you as back there catching for your daughter in every pitch. Is, yeah. She a little bit this way. Oh, so you don't fucking come to work today? <laughs> oh, so, so, oh, so I should just go do something else. I can go do lawn today. Uh -huh. Like, it's just every, like, it's... Clip after trying clip. To affect it. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. see that in Little League now, and I'm like, <laughs> chill out. Like, you talked about sometimes parents got to look in the mirror. Like, as tall as you are, that's what your kids, like, how you look is what your kids are going to look like when they get to your age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy these times. <laughs> yeah. Build that bond. Enjoy these times, goddammit. They are so, not listen. getting drafted, but. I know he's five, six in the sixth grade, but goddammit, that's it. He's going to be five, six. He's <laughs> going to be five, eight. He might grow two, yeah, three I know he's a power four today, but he's going to have to be a point guard later. <laughs> So uh, let's talk a little bit about these Clippers. Uh, Courtney reports the league is fined P.J. Tucker $75,000 for making a public trade request ahead of the NBA trade deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Shams has the report. As we mentioned earlier in the show and yesterday, uh, P.J. Tucker, uh, Bones Highland were not allowed, to, or they were sent home from the war, uh, Clippers road trip against the Warriors to reset <laughs> their mindset. I still do not know what that means. Uh, How you tell a grown man you got to reset your mindset? Like four reset, get what do you I mean? Come on, NBA. Come, come on, dog. <laughs> There's just certain people that they can request whatever they want. It really don't matter because nobody's like, oh, ooh, he want a trade? Let me go get him. Like, you, you, you just taking money. Killian Hayes comes to mind as well. He, he requested a trade before the deadline. Yeah, bro, you average, you average one. Nobody, trust nah. me. <laughs> you can request all you want. Yeah. So do you think PJ will accept his role 
and just ride out. As we mentioned yesterday, he has eleven point five million dollar player option next season. <laughs> brother, he, brother, take accept me. or not, it really don't matter, right? You're my bad. <laughs> he ain't getting in the game. <laughs> what y'all need? <laughs> Keep my shoes clean. Give my money. He ain't getting in the yeah. game. Shit, we got a better chance of getting in the game over there. That's right. shit. Damn, nigga, don't play and get fined because I asked to leave. Damn. <laughs> well, there's, there's just some of the things just PJ took and said, well, nah, don't even worry about it. So, what did, so how did they think this Bones Highland thing was going like end up? Hey, really? They, they, Let's be honest. They probably thought just like they think everything, that um, you're going to bench me and then I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to be uh, happy. Yeah. Woo! Okay, coach. Good job, coach. Yeah. Uh, woo! Hooray! <laughs> like, no. So, <laughs> wasn't really playing in Denver the way he thought he should have, right? So that could have been probably some dis... probably disgruntled, mm -hmm. right? In the time in Denver. Where did he go after that? Clippers. Orlando? No, Clippers. Clippers, yep. Clippers. Second team. So he's just 17. been. No, no, so it's just been Three Denver years. and Clippers? Three years. That's the only two teams you've been on? Three no. years. Yeah, because okay. I was with the Nuggets staff, Summer League in Vegas. He was a rookie. Okay. Two years. And how was he? Not, Played hard, dog. No. Good kid. Like, from what I could, soft spoken, care about his little music thing, and want to hoop, been through some stuff in his life. And every time you done seen him, he plays what like I plays hard. There must be something else then. He, bought, he no, one, he going he's not a pass first guy. Mm -hmm. He's aggressive offensively, which so a good six man. The but then part. you had no, he, but then you had him and Norman Powell out there together. It's only one ball. So they picked Norman Powell over, over him, him. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> basically, the game is the game, as they say. And trade his ass for the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers, we can use a six man that's aggressive. Just buy him He's out. definitely you? aggressive. He is definitely. And that's. If you know a guy, you, you don't plan. You, you came out publicly and said, we don't plan on playing him, right? Mm -hmm. This is He's out of the rotation, is what we read in the reports are. You know this. Mm -hmm. You don't do everything in your power to find him somewhere to be. Like, to trade him. Like you, you, no, no trades out there from twenty nine other teams that was forgot who you not gonna play. But not gonna play. So you can't take no deal. Whatever the second round pick is, the two second round picks. I saw this meme. Somebody, somebody made a trade and they put the kids on there. They're like these trades. The kids are in the fifth and sixth grade right now when the trades are relevant. Mm -hmm. So you can't get none of them for. You could even even with his contract, you don't want him buy him out. Buy him out, let somebody uh, let somebody else take him. Right, that's what I said. It's like it seems like it's a little selfish of like you don't you don't want to use him. You got to pay him anyway. Yeah. Buy him out. Most likely he going it's gonna be cheaper if you buy him out because he might take a deal to go somewhere else. Definitely I, take a deal. To get I'm out. pretty sure like if I'm him, you hey I, I, you, you owe me what? How much a million half? I take five hundred. Buy me out so I can go to the Lakers. Right. I might not be able to play here, but I know damn sure they need scoring off the bench, right? All they have is defense off the bench. That's why they're trying to put D'Angelo on the bench. So they need someone to come off the bench that can just relieve pressure. I can do that, so just buy me out. That would have been my... Dude, shit. Yeah. But I, we can see, Tim, because when you buy me out, I can actually now pick the... Hey, hey, y'all need someone that has my skill set. Need someone that's aggressive, that can change the tempo, right? I want to play, I work hard, boom, 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 boom. You can you can do that on a buyout, so it's like, yeah, that, I just yeah, that shit baffles me all the time, man. You pu can publicly say that I don't that you're not gonna play me. I got a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I say something, and I continue to say something, and you fucking send me home. Now I'm now now the narrative around the league is that I'm the fucking problem mm -hmm. because I got sent home from a fucking game or a road trip or. Yeah. I got suspended, whatever the narrative is that people want to run with. Now that's what is out there. When you had no intentions on playing the guy. So, yeah. It's, Somebody said, I got, they got Cam and, and Vando. Exactly why I would be one to come over there. Because mm -hmm. that's who you guys have. And, you know, like, he can be that Jordan Poole type. You need, like, listen, you, 
when you're talking about the playoffs and you're just talking about getting buckets, you need a guy who can come up there and just change the tempo with the style that he plays. That was Ginobili. That was, you know, um, Jamal Crawford. Jamal Crawford. Shit, even for Denver, that was Bruce Brown yeah. and that other Brown. Was it Bruce Brown and when they won it. Um, no, what was that? What was, what was his name? Brown. The yeah, white ball Brown. Yeah, Brown. Yeah. Christian Brown, Christian right? Brown, yeah. Like when he come, come in the game and he's just so aggressive on the fast break, it changes the game because you're not scouted that. You didn't you didn't scout that. You wasn't playing for. So you know you do need that. So I, I don't understand that as organizations. If you if you're not gonna use a guy, do you, if you know you're not gonna use him, you you know it's cheaper. It's cheaper for your organization to buy him out. I'm sorry, I, don't, I know you guys don't realize that, but you always want to buy out big contracts. Little contracts will buy out too if they know they can go somewhere else. So I'm pretty sure if you go to Bones right now or PJ right now and you talk buyout, I guarantee you that they will consider leaving and go somewhere else, which saves you money. Come on, think. Who the fuck thinks for y'all? If I'm PJ and you ain't buying out shit, I'm, I need my 11 crazy this year, my 11.5 next year. You're crazy as hell. You're not taking that full bread at 38 years P- old? PJ? I don't know. Because mm. I get, because no, because this is the reason. Let's say he's old, what, 20, 22? Yes. He's old 22. You say, all right, give, give me 17. And then, remember, the 17 is for two years. They gave me the money right now. Okay. Right? Which they might not, they gave me the money right now, then I can go and. Well, let's be honest. I, y'all talked about it. I was ill yesterday, but I, I got the gist of what was. From the group chat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got the gist of what, right? What of the other 29 teams in NBA, what other team can use P.J. Tucker services? Next year. Not this year, next year. As a starter, as a backup? Yes. Because the team. He's one of those guys that if he's not starting, you don't want to bring him off the bench. Like, I'm not bringing yeah. it off the bench. Like, and I like, that's my guy. I like PJ. Mm-hmm. Solid all, man. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm, we're here to talk sports and be honest. Who? I mean, the only people that can use him would probably be what? Bucks? Milwaukee? Milwaukee. Then that's this year. Mm-hmm. Cause they gonna make moves over the summer, mm-hmm. right? So it's for PJ. It's a tough spot for Bones. Not so much. Mm-hmm. Making eleven and a half. I want my bread if I'm PJ. Mm-hmm. I, unless I got some guarantee, a guaranteed team over here that say you get released at one, you on um, at two o'clock, you part of it. If it ain't no guarantee like that, then mm-hmm. I'm not taking a buy on nothing. Mm-hmm. At that age, at 38. And I had a hard time getting in the door. Mm-hmm. I've been in the door and I've made a great career and I need all mine. If I'm Bones, yeah, there is a need for Bones around the NBA. So, he definitely buy out. I said, he's just on the team. That's what I said. He's just on the team where it's all vets, right? He, you know, when you're talking about Bones, you're talking about teams like, like Houston. Shit, not even like Houston. You're talking about Orlando. You talk shit, not Orlando. Already backstocked with guards like that. This uh, he can. Um, there, no, there's. But that's what I'm saying. There's teams where he can. That's what I'm saying. Even with the Lakers, they can get. He can get 15 minutes out of that group. 15 minutes going there and get like seven, eight, seven, eight shots. You 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 hit three, four, five of them. You are gonna keep playing a little bit more and relieve some pressure. Yeah, of course. Oh, he's gonna be aggressive. One yeah. thing about him, he is and that's that's a Lakers. He is leader. aggressive. Like, and you can see when D'Angelo was aggressive, we good. So you, we need that. So. And what else we need is to go to Mostly Fans, because it is Thursday. We have some things we need to get to All-Star Weekend. Shout out to everybody who will be out there turning up in Indianapolis. You weren't in Indianapolis? Nah. I was on the fence. I was thinking about pulling up, but I'm going to mess with layover city. Not enough direct flights out of L.A. <laughs> 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 and I got T-ball this weekend. So... We got a video <laughs> question uh, from Underdog Fantasy user Uncle Jew. That's a chat. Uncle, or, or ju- Uncle chat Drew or Uncle Jew? Oh, so chat question hey, from, un- from oh. Underdog user Uncle Jew. <laughs> Do you think the best 24 players in the league should be all-stars rather than East versus West? 
Should the All-Star game be the top 24 players in the league regardless of conference, or should they still do East? Well, West? I mean, even if it's East versus West, I like the top 24 anyway. <laughs> let's just do top 24. How about let's start with the top 24, period. No positions? Just the, the, the best players in the league. Like, it's, like, when you look back in the day, man, you didn't have, you didn't have motherfuckers averaging seven, two rebounds. You didn't have it in the All-Star game. You had stars. Like, when you look Dr. J, Magic Johnson, the, the, you had star players. I mean, you had, um, what was it, Chambers? Tom Chambers. Yeah, Tom Chambers, but you look at the stats, okay, cool, right? You know what I mean? You just, uh, you're like, who the fuck is this? And then you got to look and say, okay, he's an all-star. But for the most part, it was stars, all stars. Now it's third options on good teams. Like, that is not an all, you're a third fucking option. How are you in front of a number one option? How are you in front of a dude who's carrying his team? I don't give a fuck if they got 10 wins. His job is fucking harder than yours, right? No matter what you do, goddammit, you don't have no responsibility as a third option. This dude, no matter if he's winning, he is, he has to take on the other team by himself if he doesn't have no help. That is the all-star. You're not an all-star because your record is fucking good. That's some shit they done added in. That's like participation trophies now. And they're making all-stars just these random-ass dudes for no damn reason that don't have no impact on the game. I agree. So get, get into the top 24, then we can talk about what the, the, the rest of the shit. Okay. I agree. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Well, that's a good place to finish up this show. Shout out to Marcus <laughs> Johnson for pulling up to Gills Arena. Appreciate you, Gil. Appreciate you, Kenyon. Mm -hmm. Everybody enjoy your all-star weekend. Uh, that hey, 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 hey. Some of you ladies, today is your day. <laughs> today is your day. If Candy, hey, fellas, this is when you ball out, baby. Candy, half price. Flowers, half price. Teddy bears, half price. It is side boo Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, so you get to get the side boo way more stuff than you got the regular girl. You what? Smart. Enjoy it. And, and if your boo happens to be in Indianapolis this weekend, <laughs> she may not be your boo by Monday. Uh, unfortunate, but this is Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. We'll see you on Monday. Whoa.